Hello and welcome to Bong Table. I'm Mass, and I'm with me today is my wonderful co-host Cassandra. Hello. There you are. Um, Here I am. <laughs> whoa. whoa. <laughs> um. So the topic today is going to be Sorcerer Kings. Our rule of the week is just going to be about the rituals. I feel like that's probably the best one to go with, and really kind of make its own little section right at the start to understand sorcerer kings a bit better i have read um these rules but not super well to be honest so some of my takes are going to be more um not not as well researched as i might have liked personally for myself cassandra did you read this document uh, nope not at all oh. this is my first perfect uh, you're getting the the rawest purest takes possible perfect i I have spent actually at two PM today I finished painting my last five Ash and Dawn. So I've been painting yeah. since Wednesday. <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah. Well, I was talking to some other people on the Bonk Table Discord and they were like, Oh, I only put like three color minimum or five color I'm like, there's nine to thirteen colors on my shit. <laughs> wow. And I'm using like dry brush techniques, sponges, um, shades like not a huge amount of highlighting but you know you're it, a maniac i was gonna paint my miniatures for akon like just like neapolitan ice cream just like stripe 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 three colors well i well i bought um dweg home recently a gentleman in saskatoon sold it to me and it's basically the entire faction and so i'm like how am i gonna paint all of dweg home like they're built and primed and how i'm gonna paint this entire faction and i've I've determined the best way, and I'm going to invite one of my other buddies over. Um, we're probably going to film it, <laughs> so at some point after March, this will come out, and I'm just going to put the entire army down on a tarp in my yard, and mm -hmm. I'm just going to grab a bunch of random spray paint from Canadian Tire, and we're just going to go to town. Like So metal paint, wood paint, plastic spray paint, uh, wood stain, I think that's a really good medium to use. And we're just going to go to town on all the minis and we're going to go for two hours and see how far we get. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> From from going to like trying to be like decent, make it look really good and have detail to just just hit this with a paint bomb. Fuck it. <laughs> I can't I can't be bothered anymore. I've just given <laughs> up. Yeah. <laughs> After it's like it was five horses. That's what I had to get done this week. I'm done it. Now I can record the podcast, and I'm like, all right, you know, getting my content creator done for, for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So I, I hope people enjoy that monstrosity when it comes out, because I am for sure doing it. Yeah, I'm very interested to see how that turns out. Do you think I should, like, well, I'll record for however long it takes, and I'll just, like, speed it up until, like, a 10-minute video and put, like, some Betty Hill music on it? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah. I, I always get I get made fun of every once in a while because it's like, Mass doesn't do any editing. It's like, what are you talking about? I'm doing editing right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Do we, um, do we have any PB news? I don't know if... PB mm -hmm. news? I gotta go dig it up. If you bought those 5th anniversary t-shirts, you probably started getting them by now. And that is true. Ah, PB news. So... Uh, Parabellum Games on their YouTube channel released a Sorcerer Kings trailer, Who We Are. It's pretty good. Liked it. A little intro to the faction, similar to the Old Dominion and City States one. Has some great art pieces. So have a check. Check it out. It's pretty good. Um, I'm glad they're doing promotional work like that. It's fun. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ones I actually do like a lot for their promotional work in these videos is the Old Dominion one. I, I like that one a lot when it first came out. Um, I think they did one for Wadroon as well, but it's been a couple years now and I don't remember it. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So, 
I don't remember it at all either. Uh, anything so. else for PB News? March 20 to 24th, uh, Adepticon is coming up. This will be out on the 22nd. Because <laughs> we just had a podcast on the 8th. All right, so this will be coming out while Adepticon is happening. So if you're not at Adepticon, I'm at Adepticon. And um, you, hopefully, maybe you'll listen to this after your games. <laughs> I don't think you will. <laughs> No, you should be tired. Yeah, there's uh, what else? They got their upcoming events calendar. They got 29th to 31st of March. They got Trolls and Legends demos, May 4th and 5th. Uh, officially sanctioned tournament at Briscon. Oh, Brisbane. I believe that's in Australia, if I recall. So the. Oh, Aust- no. Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to do an Australian accent. I'm not that, not that good. I'm not going to. I'm just saying that. <laughs> and we did that. I oh. didn't even really say it in an accent. I just. Anyway. I should message Robert Shepard and be like, hey, you going to BrizCon? <laughs> See if he's <laughs> headed out there. Uh, May 24th to 27th, they got KublaCon. I'm not exactly sure. Sh- I have no idea where this is. Uh, okay, I'm just going to... But if you know where it is, and you're intending to attend, I hope you have a great time. Is there, like, a map? I did... <sighs> I don't want to reveal all our secrets, but there is a way I know of um, to find out where things are. Um, it's in. Where is this? Matt? It's in California. It was. Um, but it's in. According to this, it's in a city called Burlingame. So that sounds fake. And here, this is why I think it. That's the case. You're gonna have a game convention in a town called Burlingame. I don't think so, Tim. Actually, it'll tell me if I go to the hotels. I, I copied something, and it was like, this is presented by this, and it took me to, like, some children's hospital in, in fucking Winnipeg, and like, god damn it. That would be, uh... <laughs> is it in San Francisco? I don't know if that's an appropriate venue for a tournament. I've been to San Fran before. It was actually kind of a nice city. I liked it. And then... We That's went, what they say. Yeah, we went to the Hidden Valley up in the in the mountains. It was really nice. Nice. I was there for my cousin's wedding. But yeah, actually, uh, I I like San Fran when I was there years ago. I would go again. So maybe we should put that on the list. Maybe when we become rich and famous, we can go on like a world tour for conquest. Yeah, that would be fun. Oh, that'd be super. When I can fun. finally quit my day job from all this podcast money <laughs> and. Uh... <laughs> I'm just. I think we have a better chance of winning the lottery than to oh. <laughs> like become rich and famous over the podcast. And however, I do think our uh, our media presence would be boosted a ton. <laughs> if, it's we, all re- like that's all relative, right? Because we say like, oh, we're not rich and famous, but like because of doing this podcast, I have a shipping container full of cyber trucks. Like, wait, what? I don't want to drive them. <laughs> um, do you? But do, do you even have your license? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't even know if Maseratis are nice cars anymore. I joke a lot about how I, I spend all my podcast money on Maseratis or sometimes that I'm just paid directly in them by I don't know who. <laughs> um, but no, I don't I don't drive at all and I have no interest in starting. And um it's it's worked out for me. I don't like if you drive that's cool, like I don't judge, but it's, it's not for me. I'm only home a quarter or half of the time each month, so like I'm just gonna drive everywhere. <laughs> I'm already saving a ton of gas by not driving half the time, mm-hmm. and then work pays for my gas because I'm using a company truck. Sweet, nice, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, kind of looks like just events around the world. I hope people have fun at those. I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out Robert Shepard again. I hope he goes to BrizCon and does really well and wins again because he won at the loss last. Australian convention. I think that was CanCon, if I recall correctly. Sounds like you're looking for a grudge match. Well, you know what? I, I would love to play him if we ever met up. That'd be super fun. Um, who else would But I it's love? more badass if you call it a grudge match. A grudge match. Okay, so when we become rich and famous, um, I will travel. I will, I will pay and bring all the um, high end influential conquest players to my city because they can come to me and I will run a gauntlet of them playing the one list into whatever nonsense they have brought 
and um, if you beat me, you will receive a bonk table swag. If I beat you, you have to go uh, sit in the corner beca- as one of my victories, <laughs> as like a trophy rack. Yeah. That's I'm not going to I'm not going to explain exactly what I'm thinking about but you have to sit in a chair that's pointed towards the center of the room. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I would I would, um, I would love to play Robert at some point. He seems like a swell guy and we've also chatted with him and he is a swell guy. It would be funny to have um a gauntlet where um Everybody has to play you, and then if somebody wins, then they have to go up against me. Oh, man. <laughs> so it's just like a really what? hard game, and then just like a nice, easy one after. We're not even going to vet them. They just immediately just line up. Yeah. God, how many days would that take? Because I, I want to play a bunch of the, uh, the German meta. Um, I'd play Hannah, Nick. Um, it's not Uzi. Hannah's life partner, his name is not Uzi. I have been told what it is, and I am going to butcher his name. E-Z... No, fuck. <laughs> U-Z-I-E-L. Zell? Okay, Hannah can... Uziel? Uziel? I don't know. Well, my, That's how I pronounce it. My girlfriend knows German, and she actually like stood behind me and was like, this is how you say it. I'm like, Ugh. so now I feel bad. But anyway... I would love to play him as well. Um, Drizzt from Germany, I'd play him. There's like the various Joshes and not Josh I would love to play. Um, there's the gentleman who won London GT last year with his like million force grown drone spires brick. Um, I believe it was Dave. I'd love to play him and then bring in James and Aaron as well. Like, I, don't, I just want to have a good time. And for some yeah. reason, a good time always no. means getting my ass kicked. <laughs> You know, like some weird messed up gauntlet. <laughs> I feel that, bud. <laughs> Just wow, this is a great time. Why is there pain all over you? Because that's how I live. Mm-hmm. Anyway, those are those are like dreams. I'm really prohibited from pursuing this line of thought. <laughs> <laughs> those are just dreams. Uh, yeah. So, should we get into the rule week? What is going to be the army rule for Sorcerer Kings? Yes. All right. I have I have the PDF open. I'm just gonna go through the PDF. You go with that. Yeah, I, I that's exactly what my plan was. Sweet. Um, we'll just kind of go through it, talk about it, do a little bit at the end, talk about like our overall thoughts. I I'll maybe I'll bring in some of the um, stuff I've read from the Bonk Table Discord and the International Discord about uh, Sorcerer Kings and how people are feeling. It's not like the listener. This isn't really like an overall well. It's just like an overall generalized view of Sorcerer Kings to get you to hopefully understand it a little better. Nothing like, these are the builds, this is what's good and bad. This is more like, hey, we're coming into it, we're going to look at it and figure it out. So let's start... Impressions, if you will. An impressions. Um, explains how the game works. Army rules. Okay, so rule of the week is going to be rituals. It's the army rule for Sorcerer Kings. This is just going to be a ton of reading. I'm, to be honest, I'm still not 100% understanding of how this mechanic works. And I think I actually need to see it played similar to how a Wadroon chant plays. And I'll have a better understanding of it. I am, yeah. I am A-OK omitting that. Well, I'm going to read it out loud and then oh, we'll okay. see if I understand it. Since I have no, no idea whatsoever. You're the hot so I'm kind of the list. And there's like... Um, if this was the Transformers, like you'd be Optimus Prime, oh, and God. I would be like Megan Fox. Like I'm just a <laughs> human who's really beautiful and relatable and normal. And <laughs> I'm Bumblebee. Let's <laughs> no. I'm, I'm just like the point of view for the for the viewer, right? What was your favorite Transformer? Um, man, the, it's not so. There's only one answer. You can only pick one. No, I can't. There's oh, like Jesus 30 Christ. answers, but probably at this moment in my life, Astro Train. Because he turns into a space shuttle and a train. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain why that kicks ass. I'm Googling with this fucking. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Um, I, have, I have Googled Astro Train. My favorite Transformer was actually Starscream because I thought he was funny. 
and he's always, Starscream is cool. But he was always like yeah. trying to be a little, a little like a, like he was always trying to like usurp Megatron, and he he always failed. And I was like, yeah, you want Star Starscream? Keep living your dreams, man. That's sick, but like that's uh, like again, I wasn't even thinking about Soundwave and Shockwave. Like they weren't at the top of my mind, but they kick ass too. Um, on the Autobot side of things, like oh, the one that turned start. into a T Rex. That guy was cool. Yeah, Grimlock, Hot yeah. Rod. Um, so then you get into the deep stuff, like stuff that wasn't even in the cartoons. Like I really like a bunch of the combiners, like the Stunticons. They all turn into cars. What the? Or the Technobots who turned into futuristic. Uh, all sorts of shit. It was kind of a hodgepodge. Um, the Constructicons, for that matter, are a beloved group. Like, um, you didn't know what you were getting into when you asked for no Transformers. <laughs> we, I, listeners, reply either in the comment section, in Discord, uh, in the Bonk Table Discord. Let us know if you just want us to ramble about nerd shit at some point. <laughs> Because I feel like we could do just like a one-off nerd cast every once in a while as like something fun. Oh yeah. Because I, I'm like I wanna I could talk to you about Transformers because I have a base understanding of Transformers because I watched the original TV show and yes. like one of them from the nine I watched the original Transformers, Beast Wars, and an updated one at the late nineties, early two thousands. Those are the three I know, and it's like that. And, you know, I'm a kid. I love Transformers. But I never got super deep into it. So me asking you, like, the deep lore of Transformers would be fun. But we should get on to rituals. Yeah. Um, no, that's <laughs> fair. Uh, but, yeah, I've... Yeah. So we, we messed up by bringing up Transformers, but that's neither here nor there. So, yeah, I'm going to go over the rituals rules, and then we'll see if I can explain it in a coherent way. Because for some reason, I think making weird little games out of this is amusing to me in this moment. So... Okay. <laughs> rituals. Any friendly character stand with the Wizard X special rule and with a ritual listed in their army list entry can perform a free elemental rites, parenthesis, combat, and out of combat action. Unlike other actions, an elemental rites action is completed in parts. First, the character stand must perform the elemental rites action and select the ritual it wishes to manifest from the available rituals in its army list entry. Once the action is performed, the character stand proceeds to perform any remaining actions and complete its activation. Place the command card for the selected ritual in an area outside the battlefield. This will be used to track the ritual's completion. Once the ritual stand activation, once the character stands, excuse me, activation has been completed, each time a command card is drawn during the draw command card part of a friendly regiment's or character stand's activation. All friendly character stands currently performing elemental rites accumulate one ritual marker for their selected rituals. Place the ritual marker on the respective ritual command card. If the round ends before a ritual is completed, the ritual markers persist and the character stands continue accumulating ritual markers in the next round. Lastly, when a friendly character stand performs an elemental rites action, instead of starting a new ritual, they may add two ritual markers to one ritual any friendly character stand, including itself, that is currently accumulating ritual markers. Hmm. I, uh, I got lost. <laughs> I'm like, um, okay, once, once the character stand activation has been completed, each time a command card is drawn during the, the draw command card, part of the friendly regiments or character stand's activation, all friendly character stands currently performing elemental rites accumulate one ritual marker for their select rituals. Please. Okay, so. So it sounds like you start the ritual and yeah. then every card that you draw gives you a ritual marker. Once the character stands, activation is Each time a command card is drawn during the control command set, part of the friendly regiments or character stands activation. So in this, this seems like. After the the ritual has been started, every time after you draw the character, you add a ritual marker to that ritual, and when you draw that character's regiment as well, drawn during the draw part of a friendly regiment or character stands activation. So any friendly regiment. Yeah. So it just seems like. Um, so I mean, you get you get. It's a chant that you get going. It it's sounds a, like from it's a builder chant. Okay, and then. Characters have a specific action to add to markers to a specific ritual. 
Yeah, so when they come or so when it comes back around to them they can do a um elemental rights action and then Yeah, okay. So they add one marker to their ritual and then they can do an action to add two markers to any ritual. So you could have multiple of these going off. Yeah. I just want to go to the special rules really quick. Oh, uh, that's not even all the text. That was just the first half of the Yeah, page. I know and I'm already like <laughs> Elemental. If the player controls a regiment with a special will activate a ritual commands card in their previous draw command set, this regiment gains the following this ritual from a free action during set. Okay, never mind. I thought there was something in there, but it might just be part of the army rules. Mm. Okay, please continue. I it's just it's a lo- it's very wordy for this mechanic, and that's why I really wanted to dedicate a yeah. section to it. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, But at the end of the draw command card step, where a character stand has accumulated ritual markers equal to or greater than the ritual markers requirement, remove all ritual markers from it, and the ritual has been completed. Bring the ritual's command card from outside the game and place it next to your command stack. Okay. At the beginning of your next command phase, you must place this command card in your command stack as you would with any other command card. Ritual command cards do not have to make a reinforcement roll, nor do they add any dice to it. They do, however, count as a command card in a command stack for all other purposes. Only one other character stand may be accumulating ritual markers for the same ritual at any given time, and only for rituals who command, whose command cards are currently outside the game that is not being prepared or currently in the command stack. If the regiment the character stand is currently attached to becomes broken, or the character stand is destroyed or removed as a casualty, then it loses all of its ritual markers for all of its rituals and ceases accumulating ritual markers for those rituals. When a ritual command card is revealed from the command stack during the draw command card step, immediately resolve all of the ritual's effects as described in the ritual's army list entry. Once the ritual has been resolved, remove the command card from the game. So, so can you only cast each ritual once, once then? Because that ritual um, is removed from the game? Or is it no, more in line of... I think of it's you because it... you spawn that card when yeah. you complete the ritual and then you remove it after. Just, oh, yeah, because I, I, I think... I think it's just housekeeping. Okay, because, yeah, I'm pretty sure you could... Sp- redo the like the same ritual over and over again like okay it's gone through its ritual markers it's popped off you can use it again um another thing that's a little bit wordy in here is the previous paragraph only one character stand may accumulate ritual markers for the same ritual at any given time and only for rituals whose command cards are currently outside the game that is not being prepared or currently in the command stack if the regiment that character stand is currently attached to becomes yeah okay so this bit of rule, like uh, wording for the rules, from my understanding, you stop accumulating ritual stuff if it's done, like if it's completed, but not but before it gets added to the command stack for the next turn, and if it's in the command stack. But only one character stand may be accumulating ritual marks for the same ritual at any given time. That that line right there, what um, do you, that one seems a little weird to me, and I'm not understanding it fully. Um, hold on. Do you want me to share my screen? No, no, I've got it up. I'm just um, looking at the prior paragraph to try and contextualize it. Okay, so what my take on that is that each character needs to be doing, like, you can't do multiples of the same ritual, it looks like, and... Um, you can only be doing rituals that aren't currently active. Okay. That that for sure makes sense. How that's written is a little tough. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you could tighten this <laughs> Yeah, quite a bit. Like, don't get me wrong, from what I've we've you've just read to me and I've kind of read. The ritual mechanic seems very much a combination between um, Dark Power Pool and Wadroon Chanting at the same time. Yeah. Dark Power Pool in reverse as um, a Sorcerer King's army wants to have a bunch of regiments so that they, whenever they activate, they can keep adding ritual markers to the rituals to get them out faster. 
And as you lose regiments, it's going to be harder and harder to get those rituals completed. And from the chanting side, once you complete a ritual, you do the effect. And, but, you know, it's added as a card in your stack. What will keep your, will kind of give you negatives as you will be um, losing the dice roll because you have more cards than your opponent. However, that does allow you to out-activate them at points. But you don't want to lose too much of your stuff because then you won't be generating enough ritual markers. And I recall one of these rituals being like 11 markers or something. Hmm. So, what, what do you... I'm excited to see what these motherfuckers look like. Sorry yeah. you were saying. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of this whole mechanic? I mean, it's interesting enough. Um, in and of itself, mm -hmm. I don't have any issues with it, but the, that page of rules definitely could be a lot better. I think that's the biggest win for this mechanic right at the moment is to tighten up that page of rules. And it's, I know a lot of it is like my personal opinion, just from reading a lot of PB rules is that they compose things to cover a lot of technicalities um, or to codify things that would be like clean up and, and um, end of phase type things into the rule itself, but the, they do it in a way that generates a lot of additional text. Yeah, I... There's a bit of me, there's very much a bit of me that this could be written a lot better to still get the same ideas across and still keeping it tight to not be abused. Yeah. It's but uh I mean depending on what the rituals are themselves cuz I don't know um that's going to determine what uh whether or not like it is it feels like it's a lot of work so just at a glance right now it feels like you probably have to get um pretty good effects off of them for it to be worth it but I just don't know cuz this is the furthest I've gotten into the document <laughs> Okay, perfect. Let's go to the next one. I'll read this out. Sorceress Patriage. Character stands as army select the spells from the Court of Fire may take efferent. Okay, how do you say this? Is it efferent? Am I afrit. Saying? Afrit. There we go. All right. May take afrit flamecasters and afrit sword dancers as mainstay options are warband. Character stands as army selecting spells from the Court of Air may take windborn jinn and steelheart jinn as mainstay options are warband. All infantry characters in this army may add one additional Rajakur or Da... Oh, man, I'm going to butcher a lot of this. Darnaver... Please say Dander Veda. Dan... Okay. Dander Veda, maybe. I was not going to get Dander Veda out of that <laughs> at all. Uh, Dan Veda Archer Regiments in their warband. Ignoring the usual allowance of four regiments per warband to a maximum of five. These regiments do not need to be the 5th regiment in the warband, and being a mainstay can unlock restricted. This is a... I like this one a lot. This is a very powerful uh, army rule. Yeah. Um, your character picking their court, getting um, mainstay options either as the fire guys, the Afridi, or the Jinn, and then having a 5th uh, slot specifically for the Regikur and the Duraveda archers... That's that's really sweet because then like um, Dervid archers are they're not bad but not super great if I recall. But the oh, hold on hold on let me scroll back up because I gotta read this to make sure I say it right. Where the hell are you? There you go. Rajakur yeah Rajakur um, infantry. I just want to scroll down a little bit so I can confirm because I recall these guys being pretty good. Yeah, a 120, 120 point medium with a shield and harden. Like, this is a pretty solid objective chud, and you can just add it in uh, to any warband as a fifth slot, what's really nice. So, I. This I is love a really. Have a fifth slot. Yeah. A lot of factions. Yeah, I would also love a fifth slot of a lot of factions. So, uh, this is a really good army rule, and I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's I'm jealous of that. Mm, Me, a lot of people jealous. Um, for supremacies, we can go over these. You <laughs> actually, hold on. You take the first one because I'm gonna butcher that name as well. All right. Um, <laughs> so I'm probably like mine is probably gonna be a really anglified butchering of it, but the Maharaja sounds pretty good. Um, his or their um, supremacy ability is elemental confluence. 
While this character stand is on the battlefield, when a friendly character stand performs the elemental rites action, adding ritual markers to a ritual that is accumulating ritual markers, you may select one additional ritual that is accumulating ritual markers to be affected by that elemental rites action. This supremacy ability is always considered to be active. So, this is a passive one, but he has to be on the field, so if he dies, it goes away. I, if you're pumping rituals, this is, this is your dude, the Maharaja. And I, yeah. I don't know if I said that right or if that's just rude. <laughs> Maharaja. Maharaja. That's it. Sweet. I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> I think people have already accepted the fact that I'm just going to butcher any name that's not, like, four letters. Mm-hmm. And I, like an absentee parent, am simply going to allow you to touch the stove. Thanks. Every time. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the sorcerer has op- a nip- nipiscence. There we go. The warlord. I don't know why it's in red. <laughs> uh, I think in case you're running yeah. multiples, but yeah. The warlord may target enemy regiments. Target enemy regiments. A friendly regiment with the born of flame or born of air special rule is currently in contact with. Okay, that's that was a, okay. Cool. <laughs> That seems like a translation thing that just needs a little bit of cleanup. Uh, mm-hmm. So, the warlord may target enemy regiments. A friendly regiment with the Born of Flame or Born of Air special bow is currently in contact with to be the target of those spells regardless of the spell's range or the spellcaster's line of sight. This supremacy ability is considered to be always active. Um, I, You know what? This is actually a pretty good one. It's uh, similar to that um, Dweg one that makes the guys... Uh... The Steel Shaper. Yeah, that makes guys uh, into spell extenders. Yeah, or well, or the officers like the uh, Herald of Flame and Magma. Yeah, if you're touching the officer, you can they can just like throw fire spells at you. Yeah, pardon me. Exactly. Um, I I like this one. I think it's good because I know I know the sorcerer has some uh, good kill spells, some good damage dealers. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't I don't know if you want to take her over the Maharaja because yeah. of how effective getting multiple rituals off with his supremacy. Because mm-hmm. he seems to be very much the choice if you want to go ritual heavy. The sorcerer seems very much the choice if you want to just do individual spell casting heavy. But only for specifically the warlord. Uh, the Raj has uh, Arcane uh, Dervish. Friendly regiments with the elemental special rule gain the terrifying plus one special rule when within range of an objective zone. The supremacy is always considered to be active. Um, Arabella loves to include a supremacy option that you're never going to take, and here it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, it's not terrible. Like, it's not, it's not something that's worthless. It has a couple spots to play. Like, if there's an opponent on an objective zone, you charge into them. If you have an anvil and you're fighting someone, you can, you know, it's more terrifying. But I think the only things the elemental are the jinn, the ifrit, and the ghouls. Or the gu- is it ghouls or ghouls? They're not ghouls. Uh, I think either would technically be Correct. acceptable. Acceptable. Uh, I try my, I try my best, guys. God damn it! There's so much scrolling. Um, the thing. Oh, okay, so yeah. terrifying one is great. Like, in a, I'm not going to say that it's bad in and of itself because it, it is definitely a useful ability, but, like, this is very conditional and considering, yeah. like, like, if the, um, if the option, and obviously this isn't the case, but I'm just borrowing something from the Nords here, but if the <laughs> options for your, um, supremacy ability were to get two units to have, or two regiments to have Vanguard when they come in from reinforcements, um, or plus one terrifying sometimes what is the like what's the better one to choose what are you more consistently going to what are you what's the one that you're going to get value out of every time it's the maharaja yeah exactly <laughs> um or I, or the sork <laughs> source was a little more conditional but like you definitely you can get work out of the source you'll work. probably get at least one opportunity per game to make use of that supremacy ability, but like 
Um, if your units, for whatever reason, whether it's due to misplay or due to circumstances, uh, are not in range of the objective zone, the ones that, that would benefit from that, um, then it's a dead rule. It's, yeah. it's useless. It's One of the things I do when I play is that if I have a um, an anvil unit, an objective chud, controlling a zone, I am placing them so that they lip over the edge of the zone towards my opponent's side and the reason i'm yeah. doing this is that when my opponent charges in and hits my regiment that is there to be an objective chide or an anvil they are not getting stands on the zone so i am still scoring it and if they wipe out that entire objective chud regiment to score and they can march charge kill it well they're not on the zone so they're not scoring that turn but gives me still a chance to keep them off the zone or counter or do whatever i need to do or they hit that regiment end up in a fight that takes too long and I get in there with something and get rid of them. Um, a simple, like that, that simple tactic prevents the Raj's um, supremacy from being used, even if they're going for an objective zone because they're not on the objective zone. Simple as that. Yeah. And if you want to hold a zone, just put, put like 0.1, 0 0.2 of your regiment's lip over the zone edge to keep your opponent out of it so you're still scoring it your opponent's not in it and if they do kill your regiment they're not in it so they're not scoring it that's yeah. prevent your opponent points get your own points done yeah, yeah so yeah raj is not very i his supremacy is not very good i do like the maharaja though it's like the yeah. super raj <laughs> <laughs> i think there's a picture of this guy <laughs> I should go look it up. Um, characters! Oh, here we go. I'm going to talk about the Maharaja first, because now mm -hmm. I'm just having fun. Uh, <laughs> he's, um, he's 120 points. He's infantry character stand. Uh, no class on characters anymore. We talked about that in the last episode. Uh, not the no last. No class at all. Yeah. <laughs> Back to be a bum with you. He <laughs> is March 5, Volley 2, Clash 3, 5 attacks, 5 wounds, Resolve 3, Defense 3, Evasion 2. Um, he's an RK conduit. What we'll find out... <laughs> what that does and he's a wizard seven for 120 points this guy kind of doesn't fuck around um he's got a really good clash of three five attacks is pretty good he's defense three evasion two and resolve three with five wounds that's a pretty good um like that's not victim stats for a duel I no think. he looks like a wizard with like not brawler not wizard character stats like he, he's kind of getting into like base noble lord stat line base yarl stat line so He's not, he's not going to get pushed around. Like, a dedicated dueler will kill him, but he's not going to get pushed around by someone who's not a dedicated dueler. Yeah. Um, I just want to find Arcane. Okay, Arcane Conduct. This is under the special rules. When the regiment this character stand is currently attached to activates within range of an objective zone, add one ritual marker to one ritual that is currently accumulating ritual markers. He just has it. That's, I, that's a great rule. Get the character on the zone. On top of supremacy of adding another two uh, ritual markers to different regiments. Um, yeah, so he is very much the get ritual markers out guy. He can take up to two patrons gifts. I believe that's like your heirlooms, treasures, spells. The Majora must select one of the falling courts at no additional point cost. He has court of fire or court of air spells. Uh, if he is in Court of Fire, then he his character stand in any regiment he's attached to gain the Born of Flame special rule. Similarly, if the character stand selects the Court of Air, they gain the Born of Air special rule. I'm just going to go down <laughs> and read those because they are relevant. Um, Something I've really noticed with Sorcerer Kings is that they really interplay with one another a lot on their special rules and abilities. Like Arcane Conduit getting more rituals. Born of Flame and Born of Air doing stuff. So, Born of Flame, when a friendly spell cast successfully casts a spell from the Court of Fire targeting this regiment, this regiment immediately heals too. Born of Air, uh, when they cast a spell from the Court of Air targeting this regiment, this, they heal too. So, there's a little bit of a chip healing on your stuff. Mm -hmm. So, that's going to be a lot. I know it's going to be on the Jin, the Ifrit. So, that's just... They get their, they get their plus two heal. Um, I've heard it's pretty good reducing chip damage. It's not enough to, like, B 
be super efficient healing wise, but it's there just to help out, and it's kind of one of those nice things. Yeah. Do you want to talk about his warband, or do we'll just go down and go through each of the regiments? Yeah, like, I don't really want to do a, a li- like a building thing, more like just go over the stuff and really yeah figure out what's going on. Um, sorcerer, all you. Uh, yeah, so Sorcerer um, is 100 points. Um, this is more of a caster stat line, so uh, Clash 2, 5, not that really necessarily matters too much. Uh, 4 attacks, 4 wounds, so still, like, a lot of wizards you see with 3 attacks, so this is already into the, like, tough caster zone. Uh, resolve 3, Fence 2, Evasion 2, whatever. Evasion 2 is pretty good on a wizard. That's not bad. That will uh, keep you alive in a duel once in a while, so... Yep. Can't poo-poo that. Uh, so you get one single uh, patron's gift at the indicated points cost, so that's your uh, relic or special item or whatever you want to call it. Patron's gift, trove find, etc. Um, so you can select one of the following courts at no additional points cost, and all the spells from that court. Uh, I think this is exactly like the Maharaj. Um... So you get the special rule that corresponds to the court that you've chosen. Um, and then uh, the court of fire spells and court of air spells. I assume that we'll go over those um, when the time comes. But it's cauterize, ignite, and searing sandstorm on the fire side. And air step, tailwind, and wildfire on the air side. Uh, sorceress. Oh, sorry. Uh, she, uh, the, the sorceress has a gun and she's with her seven. Yeah. Yeah, she does uh, have a gun, barrage 3, 14 inches. I did miss that. My apologies. Uh, she's got Arcane Conduit, and she's Wizard 7. Uh, for her rituals, uh, has access to Insight Rage, Intrusive Thoughts, Saif, and uh, Farsight. Saif? Saif? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that's her. Um, basically just a weaker Maharaj, essentially, it looks like, and that makes sense for... Yeah, I... She seems... She kind of seems like a, like, the only reason I want to say she seems like a better chapter mage mm. is because she's evasion 2, she's wizard yeah. 7, and yeah, that's it. And also, she probably has better spells, depending on what you're going to grab. <laughs> to, be, to be completely honest, like, I, I, I did read these spells, like, a week ago, so I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go super deep on them until we get there, but I do remember these being actually pretty good. Compared to the chapters, mage more support utilities type spells. Um, yeah, but Sorcerer King's hope like should have a more emphasis on magic compared to like all the other factions. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see some shiz. Uh, the Raj. <laughs> Every time I <laughs> keep looking at Raj, I'm like, man, mm-hmm. Raj Koop the Poly from Big Bang Theory. What is he doing here? <laughs> oh, I don't <laughs> think he should be here. <laughs> this poor mm-hmm. guy's gonna die. Um, so Raj is a hundred points. Dude's got movement five, volley two, clash three, uh, five attacks, four wounds, resolve three, defense three, evasion two. Uh, not he kind of seems more like um, I don't want to say like a support character, but he isn't really going to be winning any fights. He's he's kind of on power with like the imperial officer, mm-hmm. but he has cool. evasion two. What's up? He's also got flurry, so I mean, oh, clash yeah. three flurrying is actually five attacks. Like no. He's not going to be winning. He's not going to kill Holdray. No. Um, he's not going to kill a Conanier. No. But um, he could definitely tie up a uh, hard mommy or the Volva's healing. Yeah. Um, he could definitely kill other wizards. Like. Yeah, but he's more combat orientated, but still being a wizard. And and the thing that I'm noticing is that Evasion 2 and all these characters is just so. Like, it's just there. Like, yeah. damn. Well, I mean, you, you when guys are getting a free evasion too. Damn. <laughs> I, you know, I'll, I feel like it's almost necessary though, when your whole thing is, um, your whole faction mechanic is centered around characters taking a special action, then you have to have some assurance that they'll still be there to do that. <laughs> yeah, and you can't be uh, getting rituals if you're broken, if I recall from the army rule. Yeah. So. I just want to check that. Check that. Well, turning down that. duels don't break you no more. It gives you the other state. A secret third state. It's a, it's God damn it! Where is it? 
The regiment attached becomes broken to the character and is destroyed to remove its casualty. Yeah. The ritual. Everything goes away in the ritual. So the, the, the broken, not broken from duels, you still keep your ritual. But if you become regular broken, that's really bad. <laughs> Uh, so with the Raj, he can pick one of the patron gifts. He has spells from Court of Air and Court of Fire. Um, in addition, the character status current attached to you gains the Born of Flame and Born of Air special rules. So the the Raj, actually, that's kind of interesting. So if you're playing both Air and Fire, you might want to start taking Rajas because he makes the regiment both Air and Fire. So I kind of I kind of like that split option out of the water right? out of the Raj. I'm never gonna make him the warlord. He also but... has the double special rule himself. Yeah, so. that's kind of cool. Also, if he does have wounds on him, but how healing works, he would heal first before the regiment. Mm. Um, so court of fire spells, molten blades, wreath and flame. Still, <laughs> find out what those do later. Court of air, storm's wrath, wind kiss blades. Sweet. For rituals, he's got conflagration, insight rage, spitful winds, and was a safe, not safe, uh, safe, something like that. Yes, yeah, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to point out for his warband because he has both born of flame and born of air. He has the effort and the gin uh, as main say options for him. That's kind of interesting. So, I. I like him as a support character. I probably wouldn't make him the warlord so far. Yeah, exactly. Do you want to talk about Sarda? Sure. So the Sardar. Um, is, the Sar- is that how you... <laughs> I said Sarda. I said Sarda. <laughs> I didn't have the R. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad on me. Um, but we've got a 70 pointer. Um, he cannot be the army's warlord. Uh, he can buy one patron's gift. Um, so he, uh, is, um, Clash 2, Volley 2, 4 attacks, 4 wounds, 3 resolve, 3 defense. No evasion on this guy. Good. Um, he's got the special rule of fear and discipline. Uh, it's not covered on this page, so I can yeah, it is. too much about that. Yeah, it is under the word of... Oh, yes, yeah, so it is. Sorry, yeah. my mistake. I, for some reason, I thought that was the same rule, just two different modes. Um, fear and discipline. So while this character stand is on the battlefield, friendly infantry regiments without the elemental special rule that are seizing an objective zone treat their command stand as two additional stands for the purpose of seizing that objective zone. Pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Um, and then uh, they've also got the draw event Word of the Voice. So uh, that draw event is if the player in control of a character stand with this draw event activated a ritual command card in a previous draw command step of this round. The regiment this character stand is currently attached to gains the unyielding special rule until the end of the round. Now you're gonna have to remind me: is that the reroll sixes on defense? Uh, well, we're all gonna have to remind each other. One sec. Because I know there's unyielding and then un, un something where it's like they is one of them is reroll sixes on defense. The other one is you capture a zone and you can't get. Can't um, I think unyielding is you can't give up like you can't concede a zone. Yeah. Yeah, cannot enemy regiments cannot seize an objective zone that stands in this regiment or in range of. The special rule is not active if the regiment is currently broken. So there you go. Yeah, that is That is pretty good. It kinda also goes into his flavor of being the zone guy. Yeah. Yeah. I um and that that's really it um i also you can pick a single patron gift um if i have points left over after doing my main part of the building the list i wouldn't mind grabbing one of him throwing him in a unit of uh rajakur as just an objective chud and just lock down zones yeah or um Adding more stands to the command stand for scoring purposes because he's on because mm-hmm. of fear and discipline while he's on the battlefield. That's a really good one for all your regular baseline troops. Um, and also being 70 points, he's very approachable at that. Like it's a it's such a it's such a smaller point cost compared to everyone else for a character to get that package and to get that buff out to everyone else in your army. So yeah. I I like him for his build potential, um, and is just a second maybe like a tertiary uh, character in the list. Like, yeah. if you're not feeling like you know, give grab a maha maha. Fuck. 
Ma ra ra. I'm just. I'm being. I'm sorry. A maharaja. Grab a maharaja, a sorcerer, and then I don't know, maybe two sorcerers, and then a a sardar. Like that, and you know, build your war bands. Like you, you might actually get something decent out of that. Um, I'm not. I mean, I've no idea how sorcerer kings are gonna build yet. What their lists are gonna look like, but mm-hmm. I'm glad this stuff is here so far, just out of their characters, and you can kind of start seeing builds come into effect. And that's that's something that I really like about this. Um, so this new army, really, like yeah. you can see the potential in it. How it's gonna play out, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> all right yeah um let's let's talk about the things we really care about the character upgrades relic time baby it's <laughs> just like throwing money everywhere <laughs> <laughs> uh blah 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 magic items blah 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 um unless specifically or unless otherwise specified the following restrictions apply for sorcerer king's characters only infantry characters may purchase a banner a character with a banner cannot be attached to a monster regiment. Uh, a Sardar may not select an arcane character upgrade. If a character stand can have more than one character upgrade, they must purchase upgrades from different categories. So you can't, like, double up on armor and double up on swords and stuff. That's just a, a baseline rule yeah. in the game. Um, I know there was many a times where people are like, I'm trying to put like uh, these Vilda the Dancer and Rocknar the Redbringer on my conning gear because he has two hands or two... It's like, no, you can't take two weapons. I'm sorry. No. Um, I don't know. Do you, I guess we're going through all this? Like, <laughs> screw it. I'm I'm not gonna yeah. read the um, what is it? The flavor text. That's that's yeah, for you guys. Yeah. You guys can lower that out all you want. That's a uh, it's for your personal yeah. time. So for banners, <laughs> uh, we got the banner of Elemental Do- Dominion, thirty points. Character's hands gains the following drawbit. Elemental Dominance, target friendly regiment within. With the elemental special rule within 14, loses the bloodlust special rule and gains the unstoppable special rule to end a turn. Should we should we talk about um, the elephant in the room for Sorcerer Kings now? Because they d- did add a banner to kind of solve a little bit of it. Mm-hmm. Or do you want to wait until we start looking at the regiments? Um, just about the preponderance of bloodlust. Yeah the 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 free the free gifting of bloodlust to a lot of um, regiments in this <laughs> faction. <coughs> for me. Should we wait for the for the regiments or should we just talk about it now? Uh may as well just talk about it now. Okay, so I know we haven't got to the regiments yet, but as we go on, you'll notice that a lot of the Jin and F Af- Af- um Afrit regiments have bloodlust. And bloodlust is a negative rule given to the regiments to rein them in a bit in in a sense it's kind of like i've played a ton of war machine there was a war machine rule where um the what is it i think it was not a, a war jack where it basically had to march or like run towards the enemy if it wasn't within charge range of somebody that it could actually kill and that's all you could do with it. So you could you basically ran it towards your enemy until it gets to charge range and kill stuff. So you couldn't like walk it over to a thing and then like headbutt a guy. You couldn't um, throw a guy with it because you just you had to charge a guy on, yeah. unless you're in combat because then you can't charge. So bloodlust is kind of like that. It's a, it's a restrictive rule. It's on your stuff. People who are going to be playing into Sorcerer Kings, um, if they're smart and want to be a little tricksy. They will put their regiments, uh, whatever your march characteristic is, plus six away from you and say, come and get me. Because your first action, if you want to do anything with them, unless you take pass, then you're not doing anything at all, is to roll a bloodless check. You fail. And then you're going to charge. You, let's say you rolled a two or a five. You move that amount of inches forward. That's your activation. You're done. Yeah. That's a huge blow to your ability to play the the game and be a good um, general on the field would be the be my way to say it. Mm-hmm. Um, do I like bloodlust? 
No, do I understand why it's in the game? Yeah, it's in a way to like kind of balance some stuff out or give the lore reason like, oh, they're so like, what is it? Bear sharks have bloodlust? Yeah, because they're they're a bunch of berserkers. Like, of course they're gonna have bloodlust. They want to get into a fight. But you can abuse that rule as um, playing into those regiments and those factions. And Sorcerer Kings has an abundance of bloodlust. And the thing that kind of keeps in check is having high resolve or ways to get high resolve. Um, the problem with Sorcerer Kings, I'm just going to go down to one of the regiments really quick. What has it? Goals, do you have it? Yeah, goals, goals have it. They're resolved too. Uh, effort, uh, free, uh, flank. Yuck. Yeah, not not very good. Uh, I think uh, free sword dancers, resolve three. Uh, Jin, Steelheart Jin, resolve three. So it's not high enough to really. I want to say counteract it very, very well. Um, and you can get screwed over by it. And I know some, some other players who are looking into this faction are not happy with losing control of their regiments when they have to get stuff done. Having an item in your, your relics and treasures to counteract that, really good. Having to deal with it all the time, not so good. And that's kind of like the big... That's kind of the big detriment I see towards Sorcerer Kings is their lower resolve value towards Bloodlust. Like, Bear Sharks are resolve 5. Mm -hmm. it's, it'll happen eventually. Might not happen this game. Might not happen next game. But it'll probably happen in the third game. Because yeah. remember, you have two actions. And if you're just doing a march, if you're just doing a double march, and someone's in range, guess what? You're also making a charge roll. Like you're sorry, not making a charge roll. You're making a bloodless check each time. Not gonna be fun. So that's I want to I want to bring that up for people because it's not the greatest when it fails you. And you know I've seen people with bloodlust like roll and they didn't they pass and they get to do their thing. I've seen people fail and they just kind of diddle around. It happens. Yeah. So I I want to bring that up for people. All right, read me the next one. <laughs> All right, this so next one is the Elemental Tether. Um, so that's another draw event. Um, this one is Elemental Tether. Target-friendly regiment with the Elemental Special Rule within 12 inches when resolving a Ritual Command card stands in this regiment count as if they were character stands with the Wizard Plus One Special Rule for the purposes of determining a Ritual's target. You, you cast it out of the... God damn it. Hold on, let me go to Rituals. That's masteries. Some carry fans, those are spells. <laughs> okay, so rituals are target enemy regiment currently within 12 inches of friendly carriage stand with the wizard X special rule. Okay, that's what makes sense there. So any wizard, it can be, it can, the, the origin of it can come from anybody, so making one of your regiments a wizards for the purposes of casting rituals as the, is, is a nice thing. It adds yeah. um, choice and tactical play. I like this one. It's good. Um, will you grab it? I'm not sure because simply I have made zero lists in Sorcerer Kings. <laughs> Still can't tell you if it's good or not. Like on paper, do I like it? Yes. Will it play out that way? No idea. I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be like very obvious about it. Like I have no. I don't know if there's anyone who actually has minis for this faction yet. I believe they come out in April. I know <clears throat> our local Vanguard proxied out a game. I think people have the Sorcerer because you could get it early or something. But like, um, it's it's coming out slowly, and we're not going to see a ton of Sorcerer Kings until later on. But going mm -hmm. over it now is a good thing to do. Okay, um, Icon of Transmutation, twenty points. Character gains the following draw event. It's another banner. Uh, target friendly regiment within 12 inches with the born of flame special rule loses the born of flame special rule and gains the born of air special rule instead until the end of round alternatively target friendly regiment with the born of air loses the born of air and gains born of flame okay yeah that sounds right you swap <laughs> um yep. the old switcheroo good old switcheroo nothing bad with that maybe it's useful maybe it's not i don't i don't know i feel like you could build your um list well enough where you don't need this 
but it's there available for you. So it's fine. Yeah. <coughs> Burning me, I'm just like... Uh, what's the next one? Oh, now we're getting to weapons. The Dancing Scimitar. 30 points. Uh, character gains a falling drop. <laughs> so many drop hits. Target enemy regiment or objective marker within 12 suffers 3 automatic hits with the armor piercing 2 special rule. These hits do not cause resolve. There you go. Um, I, I don't mind that. It is 30 yeah. points, but it is 3 hits that they just have to roll defense at AP 2. So a yeah. little bit of chip damage within 12 is never bad. Um, especially if yeah, you... Yeah, hit, but... Hmm? AP2, I'd take it. Yeah, it's it's not bad at all. I wouldn't build around it, but if I wound up with 30 spare points, like, yeah, that's a pretty easy pick. Yeah, this I I like this one, but yeah, I agree with you. Uh, you could... <laughs> you can read the next one. I wanna, <laughs> tell me what this is. Uh... Priam <laughs> Can Kanjar? Kanyar? Sure, it's a dagger. Priam Kanyar. Um so you get the draw event that's the same name as the item. Target enemy enemy regiment in contact with this character stand suffers five hits. These hits do not benefit from any special rules that character stand may have. So that's a less good version of the other one. Still thirty points. Yeah. Same cost. I would not take this one as readily as I would the other one. The other, yeah, the other one seems like you could sit on a zone and get your character stand within 12 of the thing and just be annoying. While this one, it's like, I want to make sure the thing dies. If my regiment charges, we fight, stuff happens, I draw the character, and I don't know, maybe I'm like, I'm a Raj in an anvil or my Sardar in an anvil regiment with a bunch of wounds, and I'm just like, yeah. But, yeah, I like the dancing They're scenario. also not automatic hits, so you still have to roll them. Target enemy doesn't suffer five hits. Oh, you're totally right. Do you? Wait, do you? Oh, yeah, you're right. Does suffer three, uh, three automatic hits. So, the even worse. It yeah. just gets worse and worse. Yeah, especially for 30 points now. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, Shulat. I'm going to go with that. 20 points. Uh, the character stand gains the blessed special rule. In addition, when this character stand performs the elemental rights action and selects a ritual to manifest, the ritual starts with one ritual marker. Uh, for 20 points, pretty good. Uh, Ma Maja Raja probably would like that. Yeah, I think he's a decent melee fighter. Mm, yeah, three clash, five attack. But also just starting rituals with plus one. Yeah, that's I, that's not a bad one. 20 points. I don't mind that at all. Getting Blessed, again, it feels like it's to keep you alive in duels, and Blessed will do that. Yeah. Uh, Arcane! <laughs> so, uh, the Jadu Kavak. The Hezart Ketarak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, when the character stands successfully casts a spell from the Court of Fire, all friendly regiments with the Born of Fire Flame special rule may reroll hit rolls of six until the end of the round. When this character uh, stands successfully casts a spell from the Court of Air, all friendly regiments with the Born of Air special rule may reroll hit rolls of six until the end of the round. So, it's just. Um, this is army wide. Yeah. Not bad. It's uh, reroll sixes is um. There will be times when it helps you, and there will be times when it doesn't. Yeah, this is. I I think this is really going to be good on the um, the various gin and if if because like volley two, barrage five, range fourteen gun, um, clash three, swords, um. Range 20 AP1 guns, yeah. Clash 3, Cleave 2 swords. Like, yeah, reroll. I I think that's going to be really good because they're all going to inspire to four and then reroll sixes, especially if you get this off. I I think for a wizard, this is, this is actually a pretty good one to grab for 30 points. I like this one a lot. Yeah. Okay, so we got the Eye of the Blazing Tempest, 30 points. Uh, when this character stand performs an elemental rights action, friendly regiments with the elemental special rule within eight inches of the character stand heal three wounds. Um, 
Not bad. Don't know if it's worth 30 points. Yeah. But, yeah. A little bit of healing there. I don't think it's good enough healing. Like, how much How yeah. much health does a... a f like, I know goals have three. How much health? Uh, six stack. Five wounds on the F freight. And how much do the Jin have? Five wounds as well. Yeah, so it's not bad, but it's also... I don't know if it's worth 30 points for that little of healing. Yeah. And also, you gotta be within 8 inches of the character stand who has it, so... Your positioning matters. That's probably the the truly bad part of it. The rest of it, <clears> like, <throat> I'm not excited about it, but I can definitely see the use case for it. But... Yeah, I... So far, there's a couple... There's a, there's a couple of these that I like just on paper. There's a couple of them that I uh, don't, and I think... I think this guy kind of sits at about a like a between a four and a six on that scale of yeah. you can be bad, you can be decent, but you're not you're not going to get like seven plus, and you're not like three below. Yeah. All right. Next one's all you. Uh, so that would be uh, Neantrin. Uh, so the character stand gains the wizard plus one special rule and counts a regiment as three less stands for the purposes of scaling. So this is a pretty I feel like standard arcane uh, parabellum upgrade. Yeah, that's it. Combines your arcane one and your old arcane one and two into one upgrade for twenty points, and that they, they think they were like ten points each anyway. So yeah, yeah twenty. Uh, it's not bad. I'd take it if you got points. Um, par ever ten. Par ever ten. Twenty points. Uh, once per round, when a ritual command card is activated. The active player may opt to remove the card from play and perform a free out of sequence spellcasting action with any friendly spellcaster character stand instead. The ritual command card counts as having been activated. This action does not cause the character stand to have been activated that round. I think you can do something pretty funny with this one, actually. Oh? So, <clears throat> let's go back. So, I'm a little, like... Sorry for kind of clearing my throat a lot today, guys. I think you can kind of do this with the Sorcerer and her uh, Warlord ability, Odipotent, where she may target enemy regiments, a friendly regiment with the Born of Flame or Air is currently in contact with with any spell. So you can kind of, like, use that to pop off more spells mm -hmm. into stuff. So I think she's kind of an example of that. You only get it once per round. And you've got to burn a ritual. But if you're... I don't know how many rituals you're going to be generating per round. But if you're kind of generating excess rituals that maybe you don't need or want, this is a good way to get use out of it. And you can also use it on, um, I believe, any character? Mm -hmm. With any friendly spellcasting character. So it doesn't even have to be the character that this piece of equipment is on. What's a really nice thing? So I think yeah. you could actually get some work out of this one. If you, let's say you cast, I know Intrusive Thoughts is like gives bloodlust to an enemy regiment within 12 inches. So if there's no one within 12 of you for some reason and you're going to cast it, well, maybe you can then use this instead to get a spell off onto someone. Or maybe they're already in contact with you and your target for Intrusive Thoughts didn't pan out. Well, now you can convert that ritual into actual work with a spell cast. So I yeah. see, I see this artifact having actually some pretty good value. Um, just on paper, how it plays out, yeah. won't know. I'm just I'm putting that um, legal legalese in there so people don't come <laughs> at me. <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. Sometimes people are like, "You didn't account for this thing." It's like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, guys, <laughs> calm down. It's just just a game. Just going over some stuff. Yeah. But I do. But on face value, I kind of like this one a lot for its utility. It's interesting for sure. Yeah, I I think it it has some stuff going on there. All right, we're on to masteries. So for the first one, we got sorcerers, uh, patrons, forty points. Uh, Prince of the setting moon, a warlord only. At the beginning of each round's victory phase, while this character stands on the battlefield, friendly regiments without the elemental special rule within range of an objective zone heal three wounds. Uh, so this is kind of nice on your base troops, like your uh, Raja, not your Raja Shah. No. Oh, the archer guys. It, basically, all the non-elemental troops, but there is like um, made a bit of the Raja Corps. Yeah, the Raja Corps. 
I don't I don't mind that, but forty points is I feel like it'll kind of be determined more as we go through the rest of the regiments. Because right off the top of my head, I feel like a lot of people are gonna be playing like Jin and Efreet, Iron Air Elementals and just running around with rules. Even though the Rajesh core are actually like pretty good objective chubs. Yeah. Um This feels like it's hard to like I need to see it in action before I can really make evaluation on it, because, like, 40 points for, like, three wounds is, like, <laughs> steep, but if you're if you're building around getting the value out of it um, and having a lot of non-elemental um, guys, then, then potentially you can see some value from that, but it's like, it is just three wounds, so like, it's maybe gonna give you back, like, best case scenario it gives you back a stand, but it won't always um but, I'm I sure it just, it feels a little expensive, and generally speaking, I think it speaks to a trend in PB's design, where they like they make a really exciting aspect of the faction that catches your imagination, and, and you really want to play with it, and then they're like, here's a bunch of busts for just guys yeah. Or well, it, just my, for the boys. This one's for the boys. I'm gonna pour one out for the boys. Yeah. Um, my issues with it is its high cost of forty points, but that could be negated. Like armor of dominion's forty points, and that's totally worth it for what it does. But you can kind of see its effects very easily. While this one, um, it's any regiment that's non-elemental on an objective, as well. So yeah. So it kind of prevents, like, chip damage, but if you're on an objective, you're usually getting the shit kicked out of you anyway. Yeah, and, and you know, I glossed over the um, objective element of that, and that, I think, actually takes it out of the running, because, like, the more something costs, the less you should have to do to, to get value out of it, is basically my, like, my completely in a vacuum valuation for like masteries and upgrades and so like this is is just requiring a commitment at the list building level at like the deployment level at like it, it's just asking a lot to get three pissy wounds out of guys who are like you said probably getting the shit kicked out of them so like i don't think it's there it's currently the Raja Corps or the infantry that are non-elemental that are available right away, so that's why I'm talking about them. But they are four wounds each, fence through the shield and harden, like, resolve three, so they're slightly better men at arms because they are resolve three compared to two, harden one. All the rest of the stats are the same. I wouldn't, if this was available in 100k, I would not take it. I do not see yeah. the value in it. Um, this might be more valuable to other things in the faction when we get to more of the regiments, but right off the bat, the, I'm not really seeing it. Yeah, the only thing that I think is a, like is appealing about it, or that I think I at least want to give mention to as being interesting design, is that it's at the beginning of the victory phase. So after you score not, your points, you know, I'm not even sure how it would fall into the timing there, but just that it's so it's like. Um, Rather than it being tied to um, an activation or a draw event, it's just um, it's just pow. It just it, it just everybody gets three wounds back that's eligible for it. So that like I want to say that sweetens the item, but it doesn't. <laughs> it's just an interesting more than anything else. Yeah. Well, should we get into the next one? Yeah. Or we could spend an hour talking about the first mastery. At some point, I do want to go to bed, because I do have to work. No, for sure. <laughs> um, so the recorder of all deeds, uh, at the beginning of each round's victory phase, if this army's warlord is within range of an objective zone and the player controlling that warlord has seized the objective zone, immediately score one additional victory point. 40 points? Score double? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna probably if I'm taking any of these, it's that. Yeah, no, the warlord only. Yeah, done. It when you're, to win. If you're playing against somebody who's like knows what they're doing, it's gonna come down to like individual scoring rounds, individual points. Like, oh, well, what our last game before we called it on turn seven, we were one point difference. Yep. Like, 
Yeah, it's I kinda... mean, at that point, it snowballed, and you would have gotten a score advantage, but it wouldn't have been drastic. Like, I think it still would have been only about a four or five point lead that we would have finished with. Uh, I think I think I did the math. I would have got thirty six, and we got thirty two after the seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Scoring. So if I if I could have just if I could have doubled my points uh, on a couple of those rounds with this with an ability such as this, we could have, I could have tied it or even come out on top. So like, yeah, good. Absolutely, this is what a forty point ability looks like. <laughs> This right here is the GOAT of 40-point abilities. No, I still think it's Armored Dominion. <laughs> Armored Dominion's a good one, too. Uh, even Vinda, really, but, like... Oh, fuck that sword. Whatever whatever it is, fuck that thing. Yeah, that dancer. Yeah, million attacks. <laughs> but no, do you want to 40... hit all your... Do you want to roll some dice? Do you want to hit all your attacks? Do you want to generate more attacks? Watch me do it yeah. again. Ugh. You want to put this on a guy with Clash 5? to the dueling episode yeah <laughs> um and then the last one for 35 points uh vizier of the morning star uh regiment the character stand is currently attached you gets uh yielding still really good you just lock down the zone and score at 35 warlord only i uh, i like it still i so i think this one's probably a little over costed for what it is mm, yeah a bit because, like, five more points, you get double scoring. Yeah, I would knock it down five points, personally, or um, I guess do something different entirely with the ability, because I don't know how you could sweeten the rules text itself without making it cost more, but, yeah, I think I think at 30 points it would be a lot more appealing. Unyielding is good if you, like... Get on your big bricks. I don't, I don't know if social yeah. thing builds big bricks. Yeah, I mean, like, we don't know what the fuck anything does yet, so... <laughs> we're doing the... We're, we'll do it live! A lot of this is experimental, but yeah, if there's a... Like, I would... Th- it definitely, it's worth throwing probably on a brick or something that you know is gonna still be there at the end of the turn. Um, but... Maybe you should be having the engagement so that your front line keeps them off of the zone. Yeah. And then like, you don't need unyielding. Like if you're taking out Maja Raja with re- Recorder of Deeds or Recorder of All Deeds and he's just sitting back pumping rituals, pumping points like he's, he's having the best time of his goddamn life. Yeah. That's a that's a great backline. Ah, you love to see it. Yeah. Uh, for it's combat, good. best money can buy, 30 points. The infantry regiment this carriage stand is currently attached to gains hard and plus one special rule. Oh, I'm, yeah, good. I I yeah. like it. Um, I think you're putting that on a uh, Sardar or a Raj. Um, and they're just running around stabbing people. Yeah, I mean, that's going to look good on a brick. Um, yeah. Is it Rajakur? Rajakur take it really well, because then go to Harden 2. So that's kind of mean. I feel like you need... So, it's one of those ones where it's it's 30 points that's like an amazingly sick value on a good regiment for it, but it's like a laughably terrible value if you put it... Like, don't try to be cute and make don't put on a holes. paper unit tough. Yeah, <laughs> Don't put on goals. Um, don't try to make a paper unit tough with it, like, because that'll go bad, but if you if you try to tough up a tough unit, that's... Well, it's, um, yeah, it's playing... Business. Yeah, it's playing to your strengths, and you want to stack your strengths and make your opponent fight your strengths. You want to protect your weaknesses and force your opponent to deal with your strengths, and it'll be a real bad time for your opponent. It, like, at getting to Harden 2 on maybe a Brick Brick or Rajakur might be pretty good if you're going against a lot of Cleave. Tip away all that. They are Defense 2 of the Shield, so it's not like you're going to be doing well there anyway, but any Cleave stuff will go away pretty quick. Florida Conflict it's... is... Go ahead. Oh, no, no. Um, oh. No, uh, sorry, go ahead. Lord of Conflict, I just want to say quickly, uh, 10 out of 10 name. Great. Love that. Probably going to change my name on the official Discord to a variation of that, because I'm obnoxious. Right, the fuck now? I mean, I wasn't, but now that you've said something. All right, well, Lord of Conflict's 20 points. This character saying gets plus one to its clash, tax, and wounds. It's your old combat retinue for 20 points. 10 points cheaper. Um, if you're building a fighty character, I would take it. 
Um, probably your starter or Raj are looking at this. I don't really see the Maharaj. <laughs> Maharaja uh, grabbing this or the Sorcerer, but it's nice. Um, and we got Lord of All They See. It's 15 points. It's only for the Maharaja. The character sand gains the rider's special rule and must choose to ride a Mahat in their warband. In addition, for as long as the Mahat regiment this character sand is attached to is within an objective zone, this regiment gains terrifying one. So some yeah. rider rule with terrifying one. I I don't mind that at all. I like it. Also, I don't know what a Mahat is. I don't either. You better be cool. Let's see what a quick Google says. Uh so apparently he rolls in riding French tennis player. <laughs> um, a heavy monster with a gun. Just... Oh god, this thing has uh, 20 fucking runes? Jesus. <laughs> yeah, put the Maharaja on that thing. Put him, put, Give him that, and what was it? R- recorder of all deeds. Drop him in a back zone so the thing can just keep shooting. The Maharaja can keep ritualing. The Maharaja... Um, what else is he doing? He's also uh, scoring points. Yeah, this is the Maharaja build is is happening. Uh, apparently, a Mahut or a Mahut is also um, some type of a salamander-like lizard in the Monster Hunter series of games. Um, if that's any indication of what that thing is, I don't. It has. No, no, I don't think it does. I'm just speculating based on. You want to go in Arcane? I'm just going to go to the east. I can find them because I know they released monsters, like pre. Yeah, uh, I'll I'll continue with the Arcane while you do that. So elemental feedback at 35 points. Whenever the character stand casts a spell from the Court of Air or Court of Fire, regardless of target, the regiment this character uh, stand is currently attached to heals two wounds for every two successes. This healing does not stack with Born of Air or Born of Flame special rules. So I guess you get um, to pick one or the other? Well, uh, hold up. What do those do? Word of error. Heal to all the way to the bottom. Oh, yeah. yeah. So when a I guess... friendly spellcaster successfully casts a spell from the court of fire, targeting this regiment, this regiment immediately heals two wounds. Same thing for air if it's court of air. Just their like anti chip damage stuff. Yeah. So. Okay, so I, I mean, my read of that text is that it supersedes those rules, so you would just get you get the better healing from elemental feedback instead of the Your healing. Yeah, the board of X two, but but um, that might not be accurate reading on my part. Well, this it also heals the regiment the character's in, so you could cast the spell, um, onto some other regiment, heal them from their born of fire. And then trigger elemental feedback, and then heal the regiment the character's in. That's not bad. Thirty-five yeah. points. I, I don't know how much healing you're going to get off. Like, there are a lot of wizard sevens, and for every two successes, you get a heal, so you could get up to like six. Not bad at all. But you usually want to put your wizards and stuff with safe, and the best way to be safe is just not be like in the yeah. like, your target or whatever. Yeah, if something is healing like that, like I'm gonna try to get to it and one round it. That's <laughs> probably the best solution. Um, yeah. So. so there, there are two monsters available. They are not the Mahut. Um, they are the Rakasha Rakasora and the Rashashka Ravnar. So the the four arm tiger guy and the uh, four arm is this thing have a beard. I think he's got a tiger face too. I think they can both be tiger guys. They both can be tiger guys. You can swap with the head. But the purple tiger four-arm lady. guy. Little lady? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. oh, I know. But then anyway, when you get I, your, get your four-arm tiger guys, you get the orange one with the flames or the purple one with the flames. <laughs> Pick a color. Yeah. Pick a color, Western man. Yeah. Um, um, I'll do Bound to the Elementals. 
40 points. A character stand must select this mastery may purchase an additional mastery. That's kind of nice. Uh, the character stand with the mastery changes type to brute and gains the elemental special rules. So I guess this is how you hang out with the different elemental guys, like the djinn and such. Yeah. Um, if this character stand has selected spells from the Court of Fire, then must join a regiment of street spell casters. Oh yeah. Then it gives... Wait, what? There we go. Okay, it was just cut off weirdly. Uh, so then it has another caveat. If it if it has the court of uh, fire spells, it has to join Ifrit or Flamecasters or Dancers of Flamecasters. If it has air, it has to take the Windborn or Steelheart Gen. Um, if the character sand has spells from both courts, it may then choose to join either. Oh, nice. 40 points is kind of expensive, but then you also you do get access to another mastery. You can Yeah. It's, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's fine. <laughs> 40 points, it does, again, seem... Pretty expensive deep. for, like, a, like, Avatar projections, what I think was, like, yeah. 5 or 10. Don't quote me yeah, on that. But, I mean, if that's what you're trying to do, then, sure, you're going to pay that. So, Locus, Locus of all... the Elements. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. 40 points. Uh, so friendly regiments with the elemental special rule within 12 inches of this character stand may use this character stand's resolve characteristic instead of their own. After modifiers, a broken regiment may not use this character stand's resolve characteristic. So, Raven messengers? Yep. Yeah, this is your classic Raven messengers type beat. How much is Raven messengers? If Raven messages... How much are they? Uh, so I'm pretty sure off the top of my head it is around 40. Yeah, it used to cost more because you had to take the banner, but mm. no longer. Uh, this is actually, I think, really good and also something you really want if you're doing a uh, elemental build with the sort like all the different gin and ifrit because they have low resolve and bloodlust, and you do not want to be bloodlusting all over the place. Yeah, um, I, think, I think this might be a mandatory grab. It's weird, um, or maybe it's not weird, but I feel like maybe I'm just explaining something or expressing a really just something that everybody's figured out. But like, the damage is gonna kind of come in no matter what, and so mitigating that is is all well and good. But it seems like if you can like if you can get decent resolve mitigation happening, that will keep you in the fight for a really long time like that seems to really pay off yeah. in terms of the value for it so uh, lastly we got elemental projections for 30 points this character stand increases the range of all that spells by 3 inches uh, spells of range itself are ineffective I don't know if 30 points is worth it uh, a lot of spells seem to be at that 12, 12 inch range 14 inch range marker or self cost um, these don't affect the rituals. A lot of them also seem to be within 12, so... Maybe you grab it just to long bomb some stuff. Having more range is always good. I just, um... I mean, it is, but for 30 points, like, just looking at these ranges, I don't know if it necessarily gets them into the, like, the wow, this is super worth it cool zone. Yeah, so... <laughs> The Dweg Home Fireball is AP2 and range 14. Burn to Cinders is range 12. Um, I'm just going to go into the spell really quick, and then we'll... Well, this is the it, then we'll go into spells. So we'll keep... We'll segue right in and kind of talk about this with some spells. Infects one hit per success on target enemy regiment. If the target is in contact with the regiment with the Born of Flames special rule, then the spell inflicts three additional hits. So you could shoot that off from 15 inches away instead of... 12? 30 points seems like a lot for 3 additional range. It's it's a lot of points to not get shot by Bow Chosen, but still get shot by Stalkers. You just walk up and shoot. You're volley 3. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> yeah, I... I mean, that's how I look at it, though, like... If it was giving you, like, if it was getting you to, like, Slinger's range, where you had, like, a really... 
Like, if these were all of range 15 base and you're going to 18, yeah, done. 30 points, done. Yeah. I mean, this, like, the boost is good, but just, like, 15 or 20 points good. I'd say 20. Easy 20. Yeah. I think putting it at 30 points kind of pushes people away. I mean, there like it might come down to this being one of those armies that has weird point breaks where you're just gonna have thirty points to toss into something like that. But I don't see that being the case. And of course, having done no research or list building, I couldn't <laughs> say anything for sure. It's it's weird. I wanna I wanna wait until a couple more things come out before I actually start doing lists because I don't starter box doesn't really grab me. I think it's cool and interesting, but it's not something like yeah, this is the thing that really wants me to play this gen. Yeah, I'm happy that other people like it. Not everything has to be for me, but like so yeah. far, the until the elephants come out, I don't think I'm necessarily more interested well, in the, the step tribe people. Yeah, I mean it depends. We'll see how it develops. Like I didn't think I was going to be into Nords, and then I started playing Nords. Yeah, but they're uh, Viking lady. Yeah, I mean there was a certain amount of enticement, but we don't know what's to come for. What kind of hot babes the Sorcerer Kings have to offer? So. Maybe it'll be the Sorcerer Queens. Yeah. yeah. It's one hopes. Alright, so <laughs> first spells, Maharaja, as we've talked about, has the Burn to Cinder spell. Um, the only thing I didn't mention about this is Attunement 3. So kind of a 50-50 on your dice there. Uh, not a bad attack spell. You get more work out of it if it's in contact with some... Uh, what is it? Elemental? Something with the Born of Flame special rule. But it's still a good thing to just throw out. Um, 12 inches. Once you get your lines established, you can kind of hide behind your stuff and just shoot people. Silly. Um, searching Securico. That's it. Range 12. Attunement 3 of scaling. Target regiment may not resolve draw vents until the end of the round. Um, this one's kind of not that great. I don't think you're going to cast it too much because um, there's a little bit of a tempo thing. Um, Parabellum has resolved that a bit by how characters interact with the regiment, so I could totally see you drawing the Maharaja, casting his no draw event spell, and going into his regiment and hitting a person, but then if you're hitting them to kill them, why don't you just do your attack spell, then draw your regiment, then go into and try and kill off that regiment? Because you've kind of already got the tempo if you're winning the roll to then actually the Maharaja first before they resolve their draw event. So that one's kind of weird and finicky is off the top of my head. Both this one and the next one have the problem of being like and so and wreathed in flames, which I'll just quickly run through so that we can talk about them on, on equal terms here. 12 inches, uh, attunement 3 scaling, and it does or of death 2. Um, or target re friendly regiment gains or of death 2 until the end of the round. Um, so I guess it's not exactly the same because the spell that I used uh, was Decay. But basically, these goofy-ass events like this, these goofy-ass spells, they're going to lose you the game. <laughs> don't be cute with that shit. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. There's something better that you can cast that's going to actually help you win. What was uh, it? <laughs> relying on... Yeah, I should have put Decay on your regiment thinking that it was going to, like, do you put anything. put Decay on Ash and Dawn. <laughs> yeah. Idiot move. Um, oh, God. And I'll own that, but, um, but yeah. You it's put blast um, on bear sharks. Yep. Yeah, it was absolutely just me not just tunneling. Um, but yeah, so don't do that. Don't, you're not going to win the game because somebody didn't get their bastion up. Like, that's not ultimately what is going to get you through them. Uh, Aura of Death 2 isn't going to wipe the unit before the combat gets resolved. Don't kid yourself. Focus. Focus. Focus! What was that, American Pie? <laughs> you know, I don't think I've ever actually seen that movie. Oh boy, we might have to have a movie now where we watch American Pie. Oh no. <laughs> You'll love it. Uh, for a spell what's better than the last two, Lifting Winds, range 12, Attunement 4, really nice. Target friendly regiment adds plus two inches to the regiment's march distance for the first march action it performs during its activation at the end of the round. This is just a really nice spell. Like, adding plus two to your march value to get things up the board faster, um, get into position more, better, really nice. You could you can probably set it up on something that's kind of further back really easily as well. So there is 
quite a bit going for it. It's a good utility spell, and I'm glad the Maharaja has it. I could see myself easily casting this at various points in the game. Orcs pay chant for that effect. Yeah. You gotta scream about it to get it. Yeah, it's definitely uh, hard to say this without everybody intuitively taking it away, whether I intend to pun or not, but like you wouldn't think it, but two inches makes a huge amount of difference. I don't have a jump. Discord does, but I don't know if it'll come through on the recording. I don't try it. Yep. God damn it, that totally came through the recording. Oh god. Alright, well. well let's close one. that Pandora's box. Yep, please never open that again. Uh, <laughs> you want to do the next spell? Yeah, do the next spell. Um, inflict one hit per success on target enemy regiment. In addition, if the target regiment is in contact with a regiment with a Born of Air special rule, it suffers an additional amount of hits equal to its current defense characteristic, including all special rules. That's like, that's really fucking cool. Like, that's a good yeah. spell. Yeah, higher defense things do not like this. Yeah, that's uh, kind of amazing, actually. Um, they do have higher defense, though, so... They're getting, like... If they're defense 4, they still have to... Yeah, I, I least, do like uh, it. Th- yeah. Um, I, think it's, I think there's definitely use cases for it. I think that uh, the combo of getting a Born of Air unit into the into combat and then being able to leverage that into more hits is is cool. Um we then have lastly homing winds, range twelve, attunement three of scaling. Target friendly regiment rerolls all failed hit rolls when performing a volley action to end a round. Uh this is a fantastic spell. Yep. You can ride him a hut. What is there it is. Is a volley two range ten or no barrage ten range twenty Thing, so if he's riding this thing, you know that thing's getting reroll hits. Yeah, I I actually like his spell list. Like, I think he has two good burn spells, two good support spells, and then whatever the fuck the last two are. Yeah, those two like, game losers. I like. I don't want to shit on those last two, but like, I don't really see a ton of people. Using them. I don't see them being very effective compared to the rest of the Maharaja's kit. Yeah, there's. I don't see scenarios where, no. Generally speaking, like it's more important for somebody to get, and this is gonna sound weird. It's more important for somebody to get their draw in off than it is for you to stop it. So it's generally not worth it to try to stop it. It's just either out activate them or out play the ability. Like if you could kill them before they get their draw in off, that's much better than letting them not have their draw event and still being able to activate. Yeah. So, but whatever. I'm sure somebody will feel differently about that. That's fine. I'll argue with them. And it'll get personal. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, should uh, we get first for? Yeah. So right. the first ability is Cauterize. Uh, it's 12-inch range scaling uh Attunement of three. Target enemy regiment, including the currently attached character stands, cannot be healed until the end of the round. I I totally see this being useful. I see this useful into trolls. I see this useful into Volva. I see this useful into things of chapter mean just trying to heal. I see this useful into underspires. This has a bunch of uses, and I'm glad that it's on the card. I don't know if it can be cast every game, but I'm happy that the sorcerer has it available. Yeah, in the current era of every character just gets us their entire spell book, it's a great spell. Um, if it costed points to take it, just because it's a, it's specific to a particular use case, I would be a little less positive on it. But yeah, this is great. Like if I'm like that shuts down everything I personally like to run. So. <laughs> 
you know, be assured. Yeah, so that's a good spell. You'll get a lot of use out of that. We then have Ignite, range 12, a 2 and 3. Target friendly regiment's command sand counts as plus 2 for the purpose of seizing objective zones. If the target regiment has the Born of Flame special rule and in range of an objective zone, it also gains Aura of Death 2 special rule until the end of the round. I like the first half. Well, the first half is really the only half that matters. The second part is just, like, cool, I guess. Yeah. Because um, you could you could activate the Sorcerer's Last, cast Ignite on a regiment, and your opponent's like, I have one more stand than you, and you're like, uh, now I'm scoring it. Ha-ha! I vote smarty your smartiness. And that objective zone. Yeah. So, it's not bad. The Sorcerer Kit is already looking a lot more technical than the um, Maharaj. Yeah, I'm a-okay with that, with her being, like, classified as more of a support caster. Because if she has enough technical things, she's going to be able to do something every turn. That's kind of what your wizard needs to do. It has to have something to do every turn to be useful. Yeah. Uh, Searing Sandstorm, range 12, 2 and 3. Target enemy regiment suffers minus 1 to its defense characteristics to a minimum 1 until end of round. Target regiment is in contact with a friendly regiment born of air special rule. It's suffered negative one to its evasion carriers until the end of round. So could you get negative one evasion? <laughs> um, I mean, I guess so, but I don't. <laughs> I don't think the the negatives are are outlined in the rules, so I guess it's the same as the zero. That's a super good spell, though. Is the point like? Oh yeah, even just even if it didn't have the minus one to evasion, like minus one to defense, fantastic rule. Yep, why it's a great not? spell. She, just reading these first three spells, if this was her kit, I would probably still like I would reach for her, but she <laughs> has three more spells. Yeah. So unless they're absolute garbage, yeah, then we're probably good. Um, she takes us to air step. So that's twelve inch range, scaling three. Target friendly unengaged regiment immediately performs a free out of sequence reform action. This action does not cause the regiment to count as having activated this round. Um, that's. They took uh, fluid formation and turned it into a spell. I'm not, like, disappointed at this at all. It's probably going to have less ap- applications than the previous ones we've gone over, but I'm still, like, it's still a good spell. It still has use cases. Like there's times there's, where people get behind you and you're like, "Well, I gotta like I can't I I can't reform and then try and charge them because like, then I don't have my clash. I can't kill them." And you're like, "Well, I guess I got a sorcerer around." Like there are going to yeah. be uses for this spell. No, I feel like it's um, it has the, like there will be times when when games will like hinge on the application of that spell. I feel like like that's just, that's. Having the ability to reposition, some, like if you put that in the middle of your stack, um, and you reposition something that you know hasn't necessarily acted yet or or needs to be pointing in a different direction, um, I don't know. I can see a lot of potential for it personally, but um, there will be times where it's just uh, it's a cauterize. Well, also, um, it is a threat extender. Because you can reform like 88 degrees and be in extend your frontage by two and a half inches to charge into something. Yep. So it it, it has a little bit more uses than what it initially looks like. Um, depending on what's going on, you're probably not going to cast this spell every game, but you're for sure going to cast it maybe like two or three times out of ten. Well, also you can come and this lets you bring in a unit like two wide and then um, air step it into like full and frontage. Wide. Like yeah, wide frontage, and then um, still have your full like move charge, charge clash, whatever. So I think that's yeah. really useful too. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with it. Not as useful as some of the other ones, but still really strong, still really good. Uh, wildfire range twelve three a two mid three of scaling. Inflex one hit per success on target enemy regiment. During the victory phase of this round, if the target regiment is in contact with a friendly regiment with the Born of Flame special rule, it cannot seize objective zones. Um, not not bad at all. I do. You can hit someone with the spell and then run the Born of Flame regiment into them after to hold them down, not score. Um, 
I do like there is not a not scoring spell on her list. Like so far, her stuff is very more utility focused, and she has some really good utility. And I feel like this one's kind of like air step, where you are maybe going to use it every once in a while, but I don't also don't think you're going to use it as much as you would with air step. It's uh well, the thing is, it's um like the the second part for sure but the nice thing is it's also just like a, a mediocre damage spell so yeah sometimes you just need sometimes that's exactly what you need so it's good that she does have the like the utility of just a one hit per success you know scale uh, attunement three scaling damage spell the damage spell a nuke yeah Got a nuke probably start calling them nukes because that's kind of what they were it's like everyone it's like a, it's an old war machine phrase where it's like, yeah, and they're crappy nuke. Um, because it was just a spell that was literally like just does damage. Yeah. And it had some other weird special rule that didn't really matter. And sometimes games would come down to just like I've I've shot my gun and now I'm gonna cast my crappy nuke at a guy over and over again until I run out of focus and then they're gonna die and I'm gonna win. <laughs> but you would never like use it on anything seriously <laughs> unless you were like a dedicated caster. Yeah. But yeah, this is like the crappy nuke. And that brings us to Tailwind. Uh, another, you'll never believe this. 12 inch range, a 2 and 3 scaling. Select one target. Target friendly regiment gains the unstoppable special roll. Target enemy regiment must be roll successful charge rolls until the end of the round. You feel like you're not going to take this very often. Um, or sorry, not take it, but like I don't think you're going to use this offensively very often. I think you just have better stuff to do with the rest of your spell list to choose. Yeah, I think that's um, I think that's definitely true. But the making somebody um succeed and then with a long bomb charge feels like it's probably just feels good spiritually to perform, so that's probably where I tailwind somebody when they're trying to get in on, like, a 5 or a 6. So, and they get that against all odds, they roll it, and then it's like, no, pal, you gotta roll it again. And then, knowing my luck, they get it again. Well, they have a banner, and the two rerolls cancel each other out, so they, uh... Them. Yeah, no, they would get in. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um... I could see you casting it on friendlies like the melee um, elementals, like the uh, Jin and Afraid, the melee ones, just so that they can reroll their charge. Yeah, there's not a ton of unstoppable in this fan. You can also throw it on the monsters. Okay, maybe it, ha it has some more uses. Yeah, unstoppable on a monster is never a bad thing. Okay, so it does. It does have uses. I like how her kit is more support focused, and she basically has something that can help support for every part of the game. It's also really nice. So she's actually doing much better for spells than the Maharaja. Yeah, she's got a good amount of utility in her kit, and that's... I'm hard-pressed to find something to criticize in it. Like, it's... Uh... So a lot of the spells are niche, but you get such a good spread that, like, you'll you'll usually have something to do. So. Get into the Raj? Yep. Uh, so his first spell, Molten Blades, Range Self, uh, Two Minutes Through Scaling, Target Regiment gains the Cleave 1 and Deadly Blade Special into Round. Uh, this is very much like the Theus Priest, oh, what is it? Like Divine Sanction, I th but instead of it on characters, it's on his right. Um, cleave one with deadly blades is really fun, really good. So if the Raj is sitting in a unit that can do some serious work, he'll be happy. Yeah, that's a good spell. Um, Wreath and fire, range self, two and three scaling. Uh, target regiment gains the aura of death two and dread special rules until the end of the round. This one feels like a bit of a whiff. Depending on what he's in, like if he's in a big block of Rajakur, it's not bad because they have Dread and Aura of Death, and people attacking into them are going to take like Aura. Um, can't inspire into them, so I'll be really annoying. But eh, Aura of Death and Dread trigger on two different parts of the 
like of a unit's activation, I find. I don't yeah. think it's as strong as Molten Blades or some of the other stuff that he has. No, the the problem is it feels like you'd probably be taking like it, it between the two self spells, like Molten Blades just always feels like a more obvious choice. I like how we've already disregarded the third self spell. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean um <laughs> that one's okay. Like no, the Rajas spell that I look at it are just like goofy versions of the, the uh Wadroon chants. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because isn't death like cleave one and deadly blades or something? Uh, What's death more? is um, it's not cleave one. It's uh, plus one clash. And God, I should know this. Um, the last part is uh, they do get deadly blades though. Part of it. Um, I mean, wraith and fire isn't necessarily corresponding to a um, uh, specific um, cult, but. Uh, the counterattack and parry one, that's just like the Cult of War, I'm pretty sure. Nah, uh, I think you had Cleave one, Blessed, uh, Bastion. Oh, maybe I'm combining a couple of them. I, I still wouldn't take... Um, Storm's Wrath is actually pretty interesting. Uh, range 12, Attunement 3, Target Enemy Regiment treats all pieces of Zonal Train as Perilous Train until end of the round. That one's pretty mean, because Perilous Train sucks balls. Yeah, you can ruin somebody's day with that. You you have seen me take physical resolve damage after after I ran through some perilous terrain. Yeah, that was uh, that was bananas. But that's I mean, you, the perilous you have a fifty fifty chance of everything going to shit, and those are not those that's not, not my idea of odds. No. Um. So my next question is: treats all pieces of zonal terrain as perilous terrain until end of round. So does that mean like? They lose obscuring? No, because obscuring would be to your line of sight. So if they were in water for the minus one clash, it would then be perilous terrain, so they would not care about the minus one clash anymore. Does it stack on top of? I think it would stack all... on. There's because no, yeah, there's nothing saying that. Uh, I think the rules even outline stacking. Um, terrain Multiple terrain um, eggs on a piece of terrain. Yeah, because. Um... Like a, a pe- woods can definitely be like hindering and and obscuring or obstructing or whatever. Yeah, I I would say they stack. I maybe that needs to be clarified a little more to make absolutely sure for people. Yeah, but it's I mean it's going to be situationally very useful if you see that their cavalry has to run through a bunch of zonal terrains to get to you then i would definitely fire that thing up and just let do its work but uh if um if you're playing on the on the endless fields of bowling ball yeah then it's probably not going to get you there you can't see my face but i'm already like dying inside i'm glad (laughs) thanks Uh uh-huh I'm oh, sorry, yeah, I forgot. I'm in public. Um, <laughs> Did we just skip the last one? I hate it. It's uh it's a it has preview in the tag, so I feel like there's just no 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 Wink his like... blades. Oh I'm, Wink I'm... his blades. Oh I see. Yeah. Um I guess we were yeah. skipping that one. <laughs> I guess we touched on it. Um uh, so Winkis Blade is self for scaling, target regiment gains counterattack and parry special rolls in that round. Um Yeah, I think there's better stuff you can do even with the Raj. Like maybe you'll cast this every once in a while for the shits and giggles of like, oh yeah, I can re-roll I fucking don't even know what parry does. <laughs> I'm pretty worst. sure um like parry the core rules. Yeah, I guess we gotta just look it up. I know counterattack. If you roll a one on your defense, you get to make, like you do a. I don't. I, I don't even think it's a hit. I think you have to roll a clash attack to your opponent. <laughs> it's not that oh, great. Parry is, is reroll ones. Your opponent rerolls ones. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of nice. Uh, where is what has counterattack? Um. Anathan toys is all I remember has counter. Yeah, it's it's well they have parry now. You guys have counter attack. During an enemy regiment's class action performed against the regiment, each unmodified defense roll one causes one hit to the enemy. 
These yeah, do not benefit from any other special rules. And okay, yeah, it's uh, it's not that great. No, it's I don't know. I wouldn't use it. I'm fine skipping the preview stuff because it's my. Yeah, it doesn't uh, doesn't feel like there's much purpose in that. So that takes us to the rituals. You you have to read out the first one because I think that's more in line with whatever you on the daily. <laughs> oh, intrusive thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, I know a thing or two about that. Um, so ten ritual markers um, and the effect. Target enemy regiment uh, currently within 12 inches of a friendly character stand with the wizard X special rule gains the bloodlust special rule um, until the end of the round. Uh, so, go ahead. I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's really worth giving your opponent bloodlust or ritual. No, the... Um, From what it's I've been just do- like, go ahead. It just seems like a lot of work for like best case scenario. They whiff a charge, but worst case scenario, they charge you. Like, yeah, and it's it's only twelve inches away. So if they're exactly at twelve, they're not even in a rar- charge range anyway. If they're a March five thing, so their first action. Do they, have, they don't have to roll bloodlust because they can't even charge anything, so they just can march freely? I mean, if uh, they have line of sight, they would have to march towards the thing, but... Oh, okay. And then... And then they're, they march up that 5, so that reduces it to a 7, so now they're in? Like, it matters more on, like, a horse? What has to roll a 5 to get in? It kind of sucks. They're March 7? Yeah. But it has has places, but I don't think it's really good to try and just, like, oh, bloodlust and try and be like, ah, you failed your bloodlust. No, I feel like that's a lot of work for uh, a pretty mediocre effect. Um, oh, ritual mark gathering, I would have to see it played to really comment about, like, how many markers and if this is fair to get it off kind of thing. I can't like see it actually done. Yeah. Um, Insight Rage is 10 markers. Target enemy regiment currently within 12 of a friendly character stand with the Wizard X special rule. Friendly regiments charging the target regiment gain the shock special rule to end the round. I like this. This is helpful to you. Shock's good. Can't argue yep. with that. Um, yeah, I, I like it. It uh, ability so good in Wadroon that they had to split it up. Yeah, but now you're only getting shocking is the one thing. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Cry in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's Stasis the next one? Conflagration. So this one is nine ritual markers. Uh, so a slight savings there. And uh, the story of the conflagration is that the friendly regiment or character stand with the wizard X special rule may immediately perform a free out of sequence spellcasting action. The spellcaster counts as if it has rolled four successes uh, for the purposes of casting the spell during this free out of sequence action. Okay, Done. that's the one Done. you want to use. <laughs> yeah, you you probably cast that one a lot because you have a lot of spells and. The Sorcerer getting two spells off, the Maharaja getting two spells off, all really good. Uh, Raj, even the Raj getting two spells off, really, really good. Yeah, like that's crazy. Yeah, no, that one, I could see that that one's getting cast a lot, probably. Roll around, losing track of where I'm from. Uh, basically, lastly, I'm... pardon? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Um, Fiery Dominion. <laughs> uh, 12 virtual markers. The next two enemy regents that have their command cards drawn this round cannot resolve draw. There's a spell that does this. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't... I think I'm going for Incite Rage and, uh, Conflagration. Yeah, this... Those are, I think, the big two that I'm looking at. Fire. 
I mean, there's maybe situations. Yeah, like intrusive thoughts is so much set up to try and like. Because remember, you gotta put you have to you have to cast the ten ritual markers. You gotta put it on the card, and then you gotta put the card in your deck. So you gotta slot it to your deck, and then you have other stuff to do. So like, if you really want to get it off, you gotta pick up this the first card, and then put it on enemy regiment. And then if your opponent picked a different enemy regiment, or like a different regiment is oh, their yeah. first card, like it. Too much going on. There's too much mind games. Oh, for sure, been that one. But uh, fiery dominion, I feel like depending on the list you're going into, possibly I don't know. I think it's wishful thinking. No, I don't think it's that good. It's also expensive. Definitely yeah. an insight range and conflagration world, I think, and, and the other spells are just living in it. Like losing out on Bastion, yeah, it sucks. Losing out on regen on trolls, yeah, probably also sucks, but like I don't know, there's not many like draw events. Oh, there's like double time and there are draw events, but the thing is, um, for the oh no, I guess there's no range on that one. Never mind. Um, that criticism goes out the window. But mm. yeah, overall, it's um, there might be times that you want to use it, but I I would rather just like conflagration seems like the obvious. Yeah, more more spells means more fun things. Also, it's nine markers in the soft weight. Yep. And then on the Court of Air side, uh, we've got Foresight, Farsight. 12 Ritual Markers, Farsight. That Tau model from... Okay. Oh yeah. That <laughs> is. Draw the next three command cards from your command stack, and then put them on top of your command stack in any order. Draw and activate your next command card. And then there's a quote. <laughs> Which is fine. <laughs> no, read it. What does it say? Tomorrow belongs to those who wield magic. Damn straight. I love how this is the only one who has a quote. <laughs> yeah, that's really. I'm into it, but it's not expected. I never heard supposed to put fluff in the rule books anymore, guys. No fluff in the rule book. Um, this one's really good, because I'm pretty sure with Drune, the Crescendo yeah, does something very similar. And it's very strong. Yeah, that's literally, um, Crescendo now. Um, but I think a little bit better. I mean, it takes a little bit of going into it, but, like, that's definitely worth doing. Uh, we then have, uh, Life. 11 Ritual Markers. The next two friendly regents that have their command cards drawn this round gain the opportunity special room to end a round. Uh, not bad. A bit of work you gotta do for that one, because you gotta put, slot into a spot where, you know, your next two regiments, or even one of their regiments, is gonna get a side charge. Yeah. If opponent kind of sees it coming, they might protect the flanks a little bit more. So, not 100% on that compared to Farsight, which just lets you rearrange your stack a bit. Like a lot of spells, it seems like, in this faction or abilities, um, it requires a fair amount of setup to leverage, but if you are able to, it's quite good. Hmm. Opportunist is... Free flurry is a free flurry, right? Yeah. Earns money. Nope. Yep. Um, and then we've got the Spiteful Winds, uh, which is 11 ritual markers as well. Target enemy regiment currently within 12 inches of a friendly character stand with the Wizard X special rule has its charge distance always be its march value plus 2 until the end of the round. I don't know what's worse. Getting bloodlust put on you or telling you your march value is speed plus 2? Yeah, that's pretty rough, but uh, it also... So timing sensitive, right? Yeah, because if you don't time it right and your opponent activates that regiment for this card and gets in with it, then it's like, well, okay, sweet. Yeah. Um, also, it's within 12 inches of a, of a character, so, like, I don't know, there might be something that you're trying to bait, and you draw the, the ritual, and it's still outside of that 12, and you're just like, well, sweet, guess it's wasted. Like, that's another issue with these rituals, that they're all within 12 inches of, well, not all of them, but a lot of them are within 12 inches of a wizard. Yeah. 
You can spread that bubble out, but people can still like march charge from outside of twelve to not be affected by. The so there is counterplay to these rituals. That's kind of pushes them down. I. What do you, what are your thoughts on the rituals? Like this is supposed to be the big thing that Hunter uh, Sorcerer Kings is. They so like essentially they're kind of like just chance but harder. I feel like because you have to. They, like, it moves the timing elements around a little bit, but there's still a heavy, like, timing element to it, so. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh... like, they do have powerful effects, but they're very situational based on a lot of them. The ones that are more general, like Farsight, um, Conflagration, I feel are just going to be used more simply because of their consistency. Yeah. I think that's definitely the case. Like conflag conflagration stands out as a particularly good one. Um, Farsight probably will see a fair amount of play just because it's a useful ability. Um, but like the rest of them are going to be, I guess it really hinges on their player's ability to like set the stack, figure out what their opponent's doing, like mind games. Yeah, like, based on your ability, because I feel like you're going to run into situations where these rituals are not going off when you need them to, even if you plan relatively well for it. Hmm. And that's something that you have to consider in the valuation as well, is that it might just uh, it might just happen at the wrong time. So, I don't know. It's uh but yeah, I think the but the thing is they both have one that's almost always going to be worth using and I guess that's the most important part. Yeah. You don't have a dud in the li like not that they don't have a dud, but you don't have There's not one here where it's like, wow, I have no options to cast a ritual. Like conflagration for so will just do work for you every single time. Yeah. I do think it would be funny to cast spiteful winds on uh, phalanx regiments, though. Make them even slower. <laughs> yeah, sorry, buddy. Only seven oh. today. Yeah. Watch them use lighter alloys so they can go like super fast, and it's still like seven. <laughs> yeah. And regiments. Regiments. Okay. Regiments. Excited for regiments. We get to talk about what the stuff in this army even does. Yes. I don't know if you've noticed this, but we've spent two hours talking about everything so far, and it, we've just now gotten to the troops. That's, uh... I mean, first of all, let me just say, gotta support the troops, but... Um, <laughs> I know where that's from, God damn it. That's, uh, that is crazy that we spent that long, because I, I believe that this was going to be a quick one. Yeah, we were like, oh, we'll be done in two hours. Nope. No, <laughs> and uh, one of one of our audio qualities have changed throughout that. Yeah, I almost feel like we should explain. So the night we normally record, I got sick. Um, and I just, like, tapped out after about, you'll probably figure it out. Because it's after <laughs> the first audio quality change, or before it. Um, and uh, then we set up a follow-up to record, and we just didn't have time to get through it because this is taking forever for some reason. And now we're on round three, and um, who knows? Also, this is why I don't record at work, because I only get like an hour at the end of the day, and it's like, ugh. Yeah. So if we sounded a little rushed in the last one, it's because there was a brief moment in time where I foolishly thought we could knock the whole thing out. <laughs> No, we were fools. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so first regiment. Goals, or the gals. I want to call them gals from now on, even though they're goals. Yeah. Well, just... <laughs> the internet hates the gals from the sounds of it. Because <laughs> um, they... I, uh, it, go ahead. Yeah, my, my immediate feedback is just that most people seem to say that they're... Um, not great, and I see that they got the B word, bloodlust, so that certainly, that's a contentious rule that, that nobody can agree on for some reason. Oh, then they have Vanguard. See, Vanguard bloodlust this is the perfect regiment to come wheel in off the side of the table and charge. And we did find out via Reese that you have to be fully on the table before you can get a charge, so you can't have, like, the back end of your bases hanging off the table edge. <laughs> yeah. You gotta make sure your butt is all the way on that table before you charge someone. 
That makes sense. Um, but, I mean, <laughs> you want to go through their stat line? Yeah, it's. I mean, looking at the stat line, it does. <sighs> It doesn't look that bad. Well, oh, Clash One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured it out. Keep going. Clash this is one. great. Um, so movement six, uh, volleying Clash One, seven attacks, three wounds, uh, two resolve, two defense, one evasion. Um, yeah, that Clash One is kind of a. Ooh. That's Ooh. the end of that. I'm sure. Like there might be some crazy stack of synergies, but like if you're uh, putting that much time, effort, and points into a 110 point light. I don't think you're doing the faction right. So they. The, so the thing, the thing that's kind of going for the for the goals is that they are 110 points. They're a light. Um, they got Bloodlust Vanguard, Unstoppable built in, Elemental. Mm-hmm. As well as Elemental Attunement. Elemental Attunement just says, um, you select one of the following special rules for the regiment to gain during the battle, Born of Flame or Born of Air. So you just pick, you know, which one they're going to be, if they're going to be Flame Boys or Air Girls or whatever you want to you know, pick. Um, Elemental, I'm going to go through this now and go all the way to the bottom to special rules. Elemental, if the player in control of a regiment with this special rule activated a ritual command card in their previous draw command step, this regiment gains the following. This regiment may, may perform a free action during its activation. This free action follows all normal rules for performing actions. In addition, a character stand without the elemental special rule cannot attach itself to a regiment with this special rule. That kind of sucks. If, I think there's a way to give the character elemental. I think that might be just turning them into a brute, if I recall. Like, this is now two days later from when we went over all the mastery, so you have to forgive me <laughs> a little bit. Um. So you can't put characters and goals off the bat. You um, you do, after casting a ritual, your next card, if is them, you get a free action. It's not bad, but I don't know if I really want to use it on goals. Um, Arc 6 is good, especially the Vanguard that we're at the table. Built-in Unstoppable is really good, especially to try and negate a bit of the Bloodlust problems, because one of their big issues is they are resolved too. <laughs> So Bloodless is going to be happening a ton more. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I think Clash 1, I don't think, is very good at all. Like, that is... No, if, that's... If, um, that's F tier. Straight, straight you, to jail. It, it really, they're just, they're relegated to a speed bump at that point. Like, you're getting a lot of attacks through, but at Clash 1, like... Yeah. Even inspiring to two is still bad. Yeah. Um, defense two, evasion one. Yeah, that's fine. Resolve two really hurts them. Three wounds each for per stand is also really crap. I would so if they had a decent clash stat, I would live with everything else on the stat line that's bad. Like it would kind of all come together and support it. But mm-hmm. um, with that clash, they're just <laughs> militia. It's hard to... Go ahead. It's just for you go up ten points and you get something that can hold um, objectives and has like a, a workable stat line. So like, are we just gonna go to the Raja Kerr? Well, I I mean I didn't mean to, but it just that's the bottom line is like the Raja Kerr are just better men at arms, so they're better at yeah, B bumping, objective chutting, tons of stuff. Yeah, they're low defense, but they're hardened, so, like, that's f- all well and good. Like, they're they're very, at a glance, they're very good line infantry. Uh, yeah, and that's what I think they... They go to D3 with the shield. Yeah, and I think that's fine for what they're doing, 120 points for this, just being better men-at-arms. Like, yeah, you're high point. resolve with harden one for uh, 15 more points? Yeah, because men-at-arms are 105. So... I think, yeah. I feel it's fair. Um, they're solid. I would probably like a good objective chud unit um, at that price. Um, a good that something that you can send out. Like mm-hmm. you could play those kind of like raiders. I feel like they'd be less effective overall. But 
they're they're slightly better men at arms. So like, if you're having, I don't know if anyone's even having trouble with men at arms. To be honest, they just fall apart. Um, but you can just like get these guys on the side. I don't, I don't, I would never, I wouldn't really put these guys in big bricks like six to eight stands. I feel like you're really wasting a lot of points on that. I feel yeah. like these guys are carrying characters around, sitting on zone, scoring points, and just getting in the way and being annoying. Like, just doing the job of men at arms. Goals are better at it for just being a, a speed bump, but you can kind of anvil a bit with Roger Kerr as well as holding objectives. So, even if for 10 more points, like, I just want to just grab Roger Kerr. Yeah, you don't want to break them up because, like, no support. I mean, that's really what it comes down to for me. Like, I don't think they have the output to really do anything but take some hits. But with that hardened and shield, yeah, I don't know. Pretty solidly good medium. Yeah, like, I'm just I'm not happy. mad about it. <laughs> I'm happy with the Roger Kerr doing, and it's a good spot to have in the uh, in the faction. Um, our next guys are the Daharn Disciples. I believe this is the ranged human. So for 140 points, you get uh, March 6. Okay, pretty good. Volley 2. Okay, cool. Flash 1, 4 attacks, 4 wounds, 3 resolve, 2 defense, 0 evasion. They are barrage 5. Are they a medium? Yes, they are a medium. So that's, that's actually really good. They are barrage 5, 20 inch range, arcing fire. Um, that's it. This, I believe this is a very good shooting regiment for Sorcerer Kings, from what I've been reading online, what people have been saying. Yeah, I mean, you... Like, like I think it's a little too good, um, for the points, because it can score. What is, what's a, uh, what is it? Bosa's relationship is to a Marksman clone. So Marksman clones are 150, for Barrage 5, range 22, Arcing Fire. So for 10 less points, you lose out on 2 inches. Also, the Disciples have Resolve 3 and Defense 2, while the Marks and Clones have Resolve 2, Defense 1. So these are pretty solid, and you're getting the same output. Also, you're faster by 1 inch for less points. Yeah, the... the this regiment isn't out yet, and already I'm seeing nonsense. Yeah, that's um, that is I'm, I don't know, I, it feels a little overtuned. Barrage five uh, can score. Um, I mean their volley is just mediocre. Um, yeah, but, but small trade off for really what you're getting, and they can't fight close up. But again, I uh, the you didn't bring them to fight close up. Like, not everything is bow chosen in that regard. I think this is, a, it's like, a stupidly strong um, regiment for what it is. Do you want me to make you even more angry? Hit me. They're mainstays for all characters. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, this is, this is not out yet. I expect changes, but just right off the bat, this is an incredibly good unit for range. And also, you can keep your wizards safe in them to like cast buff spells and do weird shit. Another great thing about them. Yeah, that's a really out of control unit. Um, it probably needs to, a bit of fine tuning. Like, it, I mean, if you're playing sorcerer kings and proxying stuff right now, like run that. Yeah, I run know. a lot of it. <laughs> well, I think because of their army rule, I'm just gonna scroll up a little bit. And take them as no, it's points. Don't care about that. You may add one additional Rajaker or uh, Disciples Regiment to your warband, ignoring, ignoring the original four limit. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's really powerful. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> so I'm expecting, like, to be honest, I'm very much expecting this to get changed, like. Loss of barrage, changing of stats, changing of points. I can see it. Like you can still change a couple things on here and make them decent, but right now they are very much under cost for what they are doing, and they are a fifth slot on your warband. Yeah, and they're a mainstay, so they count for restricted unlocks. So this is an incredibly powerful regiment, considering that marksman clones of two extra inches is a restricted for the, for the exact same thing.
Uh, you want to do the next, guys? Uh, yeah, so next up we got the Afrit Flamecasters. Um, so they're a brute regiment. Uh, they're medium. Movement 6, Falling Clash 2, 4 attacks, 5 wounds, uh, 3 resolve and defense, and 1 evasion. Um, they're Barrage 5 again. Um, 14 inch Torrential Fire, uh, Born of Flame, Elemental, Impact 2. Uh, no draw event. They have the special rules Infernal Marker. Uh, so until the end of the round, if an enemy regiment was the target of a volley action from this regiment, friendly spellcasters targeting that enemy regiment with a spell from the Court of Fire count as having rolled one additional success to cast that spell. And then Infernal Release. Upon this regiment being destroyed, target friendly uh, character stand that is currently accumulating ritual markers towards performing a Court of Fire ritual. Immediately count that ritual as if it had accumulated all the necessary ritual markers. 160 points. And yep. if you take them, I believe if you go into Court of Fire, they are a mainstay. Yep, they are a mainstay. So I, this is a fantastic unit, to, to be honest. I, I really like them. I think they're, and this is available out. Like people, people can play this. Um, I think people want to play this regiment. I think they're great for what they're doing. I like the infernal marker of getting an additional success cat off onto stuff. I like their speed and their range. Like this kind of getting to like bow chosen level of destruction. And as you and I know, bow chosen are really ridiculous. Yeah. One less volley though, so they kind of want to take aim a little more. But even then, just if you're trying to like do infernal markers, they're great at that. Yeah, it's uh, you've got wizard marker lights and you can <laughs> you have like if you set up your um stack well i mean you don't even have to set up your stack sorry um as long as you're just conscious of what's happening with the other um like with your spell casting like infernal release is a, is a perfectly fine reason to play reckless with them and get them into trouble because if it has the possibility to pop off uh, um one of your rituals then uh oh, good uh, yeah, yeah, I really... If they do something and then do that, like that's a huge amount of value for 160 points. Oh, yeah. And and you can buy and paint and build these minis and play with them. Like This is a this is a fantastic unit for Sorcerer Kings. Yeah. Easy Our next one um, is a Freight Sword Dancers. They're 170. Another Brute Regiment. They're March 6, Volley 2, Clash 3, 6 Attacks, 5 Wounds, Resolve and Defense 3, Evasion 1. They got Bloodlust, Born of Flame, Elemental, and Impact 3. They have Infernal Branding. If an enemy regiment contacts this regiment and becomes the target of a spell from a Court of Fire, the friendly spellcasters counts as having rolled one additional set success. You just need to charge people and get engagements with them. And they also have Infernal Release. Um, not super duper excited about these guys, just because they're Resolve 3 with Bloodlust. And they're a melee focus regiment. Like the shooty guys got were much better because they didn't have bloodlust and they could just kind of you could put them where you wanted. These guys, you know, are just going to be dealing with the bloodlust problem, like the entire game. Yeah, the bloodlust is more of a, a mitigating factor, um, or at least it, it. Sorry, it it is a mitigating factor compared to the other ones. I don't. <sighs> It's also tougher to screen because they're brutes. So, like, sometimes you can be cute with it and run your bloodlust guys behind somebody else, and it's like, oh, they can't see. <laughs> um, although, didn't they change that? I don't remember. Um, I should have double checked that. But nonetheless, um, they're still not bad. Like, they're they're probably not a, a a hugely incentivized take the same way the flame casters are, but like. You still got the Infernal Release thing, so you can be stupid with them. Um, yeah, but you want more regiments to build up your ritual markers. Yeah, that's so, true. So even throwing them away and getting that one off, it's just... You want to kind of keep well, as many... We want to bleed yeah, at a I'm proper not saying that rate. that's all you want to do with them, but mm -hmm. uh, I do feel like that does... That's not a bad thing to have in your pocket, because at least then you have the opportunity to set up, like... It's like sacrificial lamb. Like you punish them for the 
it's another damned if you do, damned if you don't type of scenario to to present the opponent with. But overall, yeah, these ones don't excite the same way the the flame casters do. I think a bunch of attacks. They got no cleave. Um, they are mediums. They are quite quick at six. Like resolve three defense three. I played household guard. <laughs> This could this could fall apart very quickly even if you are at five wounds. Um, this is not a super like tanky stat line. Yeah, there's nothing. They don't, they don't got like oblivious. They don't have like regalia of the empire where they can ever be broken. Um, there, yeah. Additional stanzas are only fifty points, so you could run a big like five stands of them as a big brick just running at the table. I don't know. Mm. There's. Seems like Sorcerer Kings. I haven't done any list building yet, but it just seems like they might be hitting um, weird point thresholds where stuff gets expensive quick. Yeah, I don't know. I think all things all things considered, probably the Flamecasters are the better pick out of those. Out of yeah. Kit. We go to the the Air Gin. Yeah. So we got the Windborn Gin. Um, that's another brute. Medium movement seven. Dwelling Cleave 2, 4 attacks, 5 wounds, 3 resolve, 3 defense, 1 evasion. So it's actually very similar, if not identical, to the um, Afrit Flamecaster, except with 1 additional move. Uh, it's Barrage 3, uh, 20 inches, AP 1, Horn of Air, Elemental, Impact 2. Got two special rules, Aetheric Marker, or Etheric Marker, Aetheric Marker, I don't know. Until the end of this round, if an enemy regiment was the target of a volley action for the, from this regiment, friendly spellcasting target that enemy regiment with a spell from the court of... Sorry, I read this wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to start again, fuck it. Until the end of the round, if an enemy regiment was the target of a volley action from this regiment, friendly spellcasters targeting that enemy regiment with a spell from the Court of Air count as having one additional success to cast that spell. So, just the same as the other ones have. And then a lyric release, which, you guessed it, upon this regiment being destroyed, target friendly character stand that is currently accumulating ritual markers towards performing a Court of Air ritual, immediately count that ritual as if it had accumulated all necessary ritual markers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, oh, 190 points for this. Uh... I don't... Why wouldn't you just take the Afrites? Why wouldn't you take the, uh, the, the disciple? I'm just going to call them disciples. I can't. The Harner. The Harner. The Harner disciple. I'm just going to call them disciples. Why don't you take the disciples? Uh, like, the Danerveda archers? The Danaver? No, oh, that's not their Danaver disciples. Danerveda? No, I mean, my regiment, my uh, PDF says archers. It says disciples. Hmm. <laughs> okay, well, it's the archer unit. That's yeah, weird. the archers, in any case. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, PDF. Doing great. Why don't you take yeah. the archers, like... I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, like, probably the archers are the most... Yeah, but I still like the afraid flame casters for trying to get fire stuff out. Yeah, like they I think between the um the brutes, um the so far the Afrit Flame Caster is proving to be the clear winner, um, by a long shot, but I mean pound for pound or point for point, I think they all they all fall apart next to the, the Danner Veda um Hoosie what's it's the archers. <laughs> so Wingborn Jin are very similar to Curatids, where 200 points, Barrage 3, range 20, AP 2. Um, very similar stat line, only has one march difference in speed. Uh, not a ton of people grab Curatids anymore. Like, I think during the start of Old D, people were grabbing Curatids because it was a range option that was pretty good. Except they don't have enough Barrage to really output that well. And they're yeah, too they're... expensive, and that's kind of what I feel like is getting into here. It's too expensive for what you're getting. Barrage 3, like... Yeah, tell me great. about it. Yeah? Um, Talking to the 100k player where everything's fucking Barrage 3? 
Yeah, so I mean, you can you can see by the the ardency there, um, that you're hearing from from Mass that it's not great. And like, I run stalkers, um, and their shooting is like, on paper, it's good, but Barrage Three, not so good. Yeah, however, you are Volley Three, while Hundred K is basically Volley Two almost across the board, except for. One and a half regiments. I don't know, man. Teach your peasants to read. Show them some trigonometry. They'll, they'll get no, it. that's what the church is for. I'll have to read. Always somebody else's problem. Yeah, that's why we have we have other people to blame it on. Yeah. <laughs> um, should we go into? Let's go into the Steelheart Gin. I I kind of yeah. like these guys a bit more. Uh, so Steelheart Gin are 190 points. They are a brute regiment with a medium. They are March 7, Clash 3, 4 attacks, 5 wounds, resolve and defense 3, evasion 1. Got bloodlust. Leave 2, born of air, elemental impact 2. And then they have the exact same rules as the sword... What are they, the sword dancers? So yeah, the sword dancers, the afreed sword dancers, what's... If you're in contact, spell cast to get 1 additional success, and if they die, you automatically complete a court of air ritual. I like these guys more as a melee option because March 7 means you can kind of get to places easier. Um, Cleave 2, so when you get there, you can do more damage on top of being a medium. Yeah, it's... um, They have one less impact, but I'm going to argue that that's, like... Unless you can really tailor your build to sticking those impact attacks and putting Brutal on them, they're really not... They're not 1.5 impacts. Um, you know? So, uh, I don't think that... I think that's a good trade-off. I think these guys are a lot more appealing. It also bears mentioning that this is the first cleave that we're seeing. Um, yeah. Although some of the shooters have AP, so that's, I guess... Uh, nice. It seems like that's where that's mostly coming from, which is good. But like AP tends to be uh, AP one unless you're uh, dealing with like a very special unit. Um, and so, it, well, AP one is nice. It's it's very nice on a ranged unit, but it's not as nice as AP two uh, yeah. or cleave two. So, um, yeah, I mean, you're gonna need like I think having at least one or two regiments that hit with cleave two is almost obligatory in the current game environments so. you, you need some arm like you need some armor piercing and cleave two really does it for you like it's just when you have something that's cleave two or cleave three it's like you you can confirm kills much easier and you're not just in a grind with something that's like a super anvil and you can you have some hardened clearance as well so if something's hardened one you can you know, still do some damage yeah so, cleave, cleave two does is good like i have play steel legion um bloodlust Still, like it still sucks, but it, you, you know you're gonna clash three March seven cleave two regiment. Um, its defensive stats are okay. Wound five is good. Four attacks, not super great, but it'll do for what it's trying to do. And this is very much like a second or third wave regiment, as it has a job and has a very easily defined job. What I do. The other thing is because the, these guys are elemental, like you can also like move charge clash with them yeah yeah you're right you can do a ritual but then you gotta roll bloodlust <laughs> at march yeah so that's a little that's a, a little tough but uh but yeah if you can s- set up your rituals right you can get turns where you're move charge clashing with these guys and that's that's pretty like i mean it was so good they had to take it away from Tontors, so yeah he was the problem but uh yeah, um, probably the best out of the... Well, it's the better melee option. Um, I still think... I don't know, I think, again, all things being equal, a free flame casters probably win out of all the brutes, but... Yeah, yeah. I, I, not having to deal with Bloodlust is probably the best bet, and they have... Even if their range is shorter, I feel like they have more output just because of their Barrage 5. Yeah. Get some flank spells off with additional hits. It'll just be nice overall. Yeah. So. 
that's life. Um, so that takes us to the the Mahat Mahut. Um, Supposedly, this is an elephant. Yeah, well, I, I mean, they I, I was promised elephants, so it, it had better be. Um, heavy monster, six movement, uh, volley two, clash two, ten attacks, twenty wounds, three resolve, three defense, no evasion. It's got ten barrage, the twenty inch range, brutal impact two, cleave, hardened, uh, impact, um, five. Yeah, cleave one, hardened one. Oh yeah, sorry. Cleave one, hard one, uh, impact five, line breaker, oblivious, and trample five. Also, the Mahout may perform a free volley action during its activation and may perform a volley action while in contact with an enemy regiment, but must target the enemy regiments it's in contact with. A Mahout may not perform more than one volley action during its activation. Um, so, I remember when this thing was called the Tontor. <laughs> Go on. Well, it's got a pre-release um, Tontor, or similar to a pre-release uh, Tontor stat line with the uh, with the barrage and everything. I mean, 240 points is uh, steep. That's, uh, you know... That's Ashen Dawn. Yeah. Um, but it's, a, it has... It's an Ashen Dawn, I'm say. 20 wounds is a good amount of wounds. I think that's one of the more appealing aspects of it 10 attacks is a little a little thin um, yeah but i think you're mainly shooting with this thing. i mean from a free volley action activation from volume action once in contact well you can do stuff with its volley but like it's um it's definitely like a a thing where the the package as a whole is where the value is because it's it take it like each individual component of it is kind of just like oh that's whatever but when you combine them all into a single thing at 240 points like this thing will be as good as the person running it yeah it it also gives me very much um i'll bring your drake vibes because you can put your uh maharaja on it and he can mm. sit safely on it with a 20-wound buffer. He can sit in the zone and keep shooting stuff. He can support with his spells over top of people. He can cast his rituals. Like, I feel like this is the Maha Raja Chariot, just like the Hellbrand Drake is the Sorcerer Chariot. Like, throw your character yeah. on top, and he has a, has a great time. Yeah. So yeah, I, can, I can very easily see Maha Rajas going on these things. Yeah, but I mean, even without one, like it's not out of the question, I think. Um, it's, uh, it's solid. Like, it'll get things done. Brutal 2, uh, Impact 5, like, it's the, so the impacts are kind of weak. Um, that would, I say, I would say is probably the worst part of the package, but you got Trample, it's kind of shoring that up. And then the Barrage and the, the, the 10 attacks, so, like, you're so probably going to manage to, uh, well, so you're brutal you're brutal impact too so that's not bad so you could charge in impact shoot trample yeah that's all available to you this thing has stuff to do yeah so it's not gonna like you can't really i don't think it'll soak um you can't tank with it at all like you definitely have to be hitting with it but oh uh, no harden one on 20 wounds with defense and resolve three that hard one's gonna do a lot of work. And Oblivion. Oh, this is in the other. No, I, I think that'll probably go down pretty quick. If I'm being in my in my experience running big dinosaurs, some big daddies uh, as you call them. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they. Uh, yeah, um, defense three, even with the hardened on it, is not gonna. At that point, so. No, I don't know. I'm kind of overthinking it, but I, I feel like so if something is D three and Harden one, like you need to be forcing a suboptimal engagement to it because otherwise I'm just going to send in the cleave two thing and have that fight it. And the cleave two thing will do some do some serious work into this. Yeah, uh, a lot of a bunch of cleave two hits are going to put that thing down probably in a round or two, especially with the. I mean, resolve three is fine, but you're, it's really like you're flipping a coin with every wound that you take as to whether or not you take another wound. So, 
I'm I'm not a hundred percent on this. I think it might it is a heavy. I think it might be a little too expensive for what it's trying to do. A two forty. It's pricey. It's I think it's one of those things where if somebody's using it smart, it's gonna almost border on a like an MPE. But if somebody's using it bad, it's gonna kind of border on an MPE. It's just whoever is experiencing it. Yeah. I don't, I'd have to see this thing on the table played, but I'm just off the bat, like, this thing very much kind of looks like it acts like a Hellbringer Drake with a Sorcerer on top, if you put a Maharaja on it, and I think you yeah, can get I some good work out of that. It's definitely more appealing with the wizard on top, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a lot for what it's, um, for what it is in any case, but I don't want to just keep saying that seven or eight more times. <laughs> Let's get to the cool thing. Yeah, the... Oh, sorry, do you want to take this one? Uh, I will butcher this name. Would you like to say the name? Or do you want to watch me butcher it? Uh, well, I can go ahead and give it a try here. So, uh, Rakshasha Bakasura. Okay. So, the Ra- <laughs> Ra- Rakshasha Bakasura. Jesus. Uh, it's 260 points. This is a monster, heavy class, 7 movement, only 1, clash 3. 15 attacks, 16 wounds, resolve and defense 3 with evasion 1. Has aura of death 5, horn of flame, cleave 1, elemental, impact 5, terrifying 1. It has arrogancy, what's a special rule on it? This regiment adds plus 3 to its charge distance when performing a charge action against an enemy regiment with the character stand currently attached to it. Furthermore, this regiment can perform a dual action during its activation if it was a character. Should the enemy character stand refuse a duel, this regiment gains the flurry special rule until end of round. If this regiment destroys an enemy warlord, the player in control of this monster immediately scores one VP. Holy fuck, this is crazy. Yeah. Its second special rule is last word. Upon this regiment being destroyed, target enemy regiment within 8 inches of a friendly character stand or regiment with the Wizard X special rule. Target regiment suffers 8 automatic hits. These hits are inflicted against the enemy regiment's flank. Wounds resulting from these hits do not cause any morale test. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, oh, this is woo. This is a monster. Oh my god! That's what we in the business call a spicy meatball. Yeah, fifteen attacks. I don't. Is there any other monster in the game that has higher than fifteen attack? Um, I go check the door by a small by like one or two. Satisfaction. Go to Nords. I want to. I see what Nar. Got fourteen attacks. Drum. That's a drum beast. Contour sixteen. Contour's, yeah. This is still really good. Like if they refuse the duel, it gains flurry on its clash three, inspiring to four. Um, killing a character and scoring a point's really good. Last word is really funny and good. Is some extra damage. Um, Arch 7, so it's quick, is really good. No bloodlust, thank god. Has elemental, so you could ritual, go in this thing, march, charge, clash. What's really good? Like, you can get some nice combos out of it. Or, uh, charge dual clash. Uh, I thought it was a free charge. Oh, you're right, it is not a free duel. So it can duel if it has actions, too. Yeah, so charge dual clash. Or inspire dual clash. I think well, you charge. Oh yeah, I mean in a charge scenario, but uh, if you're already dug in, like you can still inspire, then force the duel, get that flurry, and then clash with it. Yeah, no, there's there is a lot going on for this Bakasha. Uh, Bakasha. I and you can buy this thing. It's on pre-order. Like, ooh, this is, I knew people were just saying this is the character killer, and now I understand why. Oh my god. Yeah. And also it's plus three to its charge distance. So you get your like seven plus three to ten plus your D six. Like this thing's come from downtown. Yeah, it's uh the last word is is hilarious to me as well, because it's just like fuck you trample. You can't uh, stop me now. <laughs> yeah. It's uh so I mean why wouldn't you take one of these is uh, kind of how I feel at a glance and, and especially the way that the ability synergized to sweeten it up and give you more capability from it. Yeah. 
pretty I'm sold. Um I might try to sneak one of these into my Nords list. <laughs> I swear it's a nice shirt now. I swear. Yeah. No man, we got him. Look, he's giant. <laughs> Big with forearms. That's Ice Yotnars. Yeah. And on fire. Oh my god. This thing is great. I love it. Yeah, that's a I would run one of those for sure. Easy. Um <laughs> What do we got? What what has to follow up this mighty creature? <laughs> Next up the it's the so it's the other Tiger Man, the Rakshasha Ravanar. All right, tell me about him. Monster, heavy. Movement 7, volley 1, clash 3, 11 attacks, 16 wounds, 3 resolve, 3 defense, evasion 1. Special rules are Aura of Death 5, Born of Flame, Cleave 2, Elemental, Fiend Hunter, Impact 5, uh, Terrifying 1. Um, it's got Hubris, so you get plus 3 to the charge distance when you're performing a charge action against a monster regiment, and then also Last Word, which is... Fuck you, Trample. So this is the monster killer version. I... It's also 240 points. I don't mind this one. If you have a lot of monsters in your meta, yeah, taking it's probably better. But even I might take this without... Um, maybe I don't have like the extra 20 points and I might just swap it out. Just because it has Cleave 2. Yeah, Cleave 2 is a lot nicer. Like, the all the character nonsense is fun, but it also... They're both... So they're both units that are replying, relying on certain conditions to get, like, the best output or the best whatever out of them. Mm-hmm. Um, which is fine, but... Um, if you're looking at what is better if you're not getting any of those advantages um then i almost feel like the um ravenar is probably the better pick in a vacuum because you're getting more cleave um fewer attacks um but you are getting fiend hunter um and uh there's just um you also get the charges against monsters, which is nice, but Fiend Hunter also works on brutes, so I feel like you're going to get more opportunities to get the additional value out of the Ravenar. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Um, and it, and it comes in at better points. Like I think they're both great, perfect. I don't think you could go wrong with either of them. There's even maybe an argument. I like I'm going to have to get into building some lists and seeing. But I, I feel, excuse me, I feel like there's possibly. Um, lists where you take one of each and it makes sense yeah i i agree i would a lot of points but man these these are cool i really like the monsters and sorcerer kings yeah yeah that's the like there do we do you wanna all right uh, i'm gonna go to the next monster what is the prin avatar avatar is it Trinavarta? Trinavarta, is that how you say that? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how you say any of this shit, but that's uh, yeah. Trinavarta, Trinavarta, something. I'm going to go with the Trinavarta. Uh, it's 220 points. This thing is a monster medium. Movement 7, volley 3, and clash 3. 10 attacks, 60 moons, resolve a defense 3, evasion 2. It has 12 barrage, range 16. It's born of air with dead shots, so it always has take aim, so it's always going to be volley 4, which is really good. It has elemental and loose formation. The Trinavara may perform a free volley action during its activation. It may perform a volley action while in contact with an enemy regiment, but must be the target of the members that it's in contact with. Um, it may not perform more than one volley action during its activation. Same thing, that's the same rule for the Mahut. It's got two special rules. Whirling Storm. While within range of an objective zone, when the Trinavara performs a volley action, may instead perform a volley action against all enemy regiments within range of the same objective zone. <laughs> okay. Um, the Trinavara rolls its full barrage against each regiment separately. These hits count as being inflicted simultaneously. When performing a volley action in this way, the Trinavara counts as having performed a single volley action. Then has Eye of the Storm. Upon this regiment being destroyed, enemy regiments within range of the same objective zone... 
This regiment is currently within range. Cannot benefit from the inspired special rule to end the round. <laughs> okay, so this um, thing wants to touch his zone and just spin to win. Yeah. I don't... I think Whirling Storm is going to feel really great the one time you pull it off, and then it's never going to work in your meta ever again. Um, also, how many, how many times are we getting more than, like, one friendly and one enemy uh, regiment on a zone? So I do, sometimes I will crowd zones as a Nord player, but that just sort of comes with having too many activations. Um, but Rain of I was the anti-Nord tech, everyone needed. Kind of, but I, I mean, that's because I, ne- I don't have to worry about somebody cluster bombing my guys. Like, if that was a more pertinent <laughs> consideration, then, um, like, I would account for that. And honestly, like, cl- having too many guys crowded on the zone generally I'm, is a misplay on my part, so don't do that. <laughs> um, yeah, you generally only want one guy on the zone and everybody else sort of, like, in a good support position, but you don't need to be right. Right in the shit. So I think w- once you see this thing, you're just going to be like, okay, well, no. Yeah, I, I do agree that it'll, it'll be really funny the one time and feel really awesome. I do think Whirling Storm might have to... Well, but it's range 16. Okay, so Whirling Storm might be within 12 of the... While the monster's on a zone, within 12 inches of the monster, it makes a range attack against all enemy regiments. That would make it more effective as like this thing wants to get on a zone and wants to spin and attack everything not on a zone because it's like they're nine inch zones and usually people just get like one regiment on there to contest it to score it to kind of zone people out of it um and then they yeah and then as you said just have stuff kind of around it um i find myself rarely having more than one thing on a zone like at most two things so i don't know if ruling storm is going to be that effective for what it's doing no, it's like it's a cool bonus if somebody has opened themselves up to it, but it's not. I worry that this is the sort of thing that a new player looks at and they're like, wow, I'm going to kill four regiments and win the game with this. Yeah, and, just not and how that's, it that, yeah, that won't be how it goes. But on paper, I, I can definitely see how you would read it and go like, wow. Oh, yeah. Um, But someone's going to have the game where they get on a zone and kill four regiments with it. That's and they're true. like, it's going to happen, but I don't, I 100% don't expect this to happen all the time or it's going to be very rare. Yeah. One of the nice things I like about this is that it's always Raleigh four. So you're always March shooting. What's kind of nice. So it's very, it's very mo- um, movable and just has a lot of like, it's going places all the time. Yeah. Um, high speed elementals for that multiple act like you could do the multiple activations like double march and shoot and stuff loose formation keeping it safe I imagine this thing being just like a giant tornado with like spooky eyeballs in the middle <laughs> that's that all it is right. and it, it's like dual wielding bows or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean that's probably not far off but I think this is a, another totally worth uh, taking unit regiment monster um, loose formation is good too. That means it'll win shooting fights. So, or not? Wait, is that loose formation? Fuck. Yeah, it's loose formation on it. <laughs> yeah, but is that? I now I gotta double check loose formation because isn't that impacts? Maybe I'm wrong. It doesn't have impacts. So it doesn't care. And also, yes. Okay, now I just I need to make sure that I'm not crazy. I mean, oh. in this sense oh do you do you reduce the impact attacks into loose formation things uh okay no no i didn't know if it reduced the number of volleys or the number of impacts that the regiment took for uh just a moment even though i do actually possess that information um but yeah uh so yeah with i think loose formation is always good on ranged units because it means that they can outshoot other ranged units what i What's really strong, I currently, I'm not going to lie, I kind of totally just want to build um, a couple Ragikur to put my characters in, and then just just take monsters. <laughs> take all the different monsters. Like, take uh, take the kind of Avatar, the Rakshashas, like the two different ones, the Mahut, 
and just like go to town with all these guys, just the the monster squad. Yeah, this does seem like the you can run the monster mash list that you always wanted to as a Wadroon player. <laughs> But you now can with these guys. I mean, avoid like reading through this. It's uh, these guys look kind of cool. I don't know. <laughs> um. So the next thing is a bunch of upcoming regiments with a preview. We're not going to go over any of these. They just kind of like, oh, it has this rule. Oh, look, they have these spells. Like, there's like a cavalry wizard regiment. There's some more medium infantry. There's a lightning elemental brute regiment name to be announced, so we're, I'm not going to speculate. Special rules, plenty. Okay, thank you. So yeah. All right, so yeah. now that we've finally gone over the entirety of the faction, what are your thoughts on Sorcerer Kings? Uh, they like they look solid to me. Like, I think you have a lot of really good tools to, to win games with. Um, the ritual stuff is, is interesting. I mean, it's a, it's a conquest army special rule. So like, I don't, uh, I think it's just the, it's about on the same level as chance or, or anything of that nature in terms of, um, how it impacts how you play them. But, um, yeah, they see, they seem like a high skill ceiling faction. Um, but they seem to have the pieces in place that like you can still perform with them even if you're not making every optimal decision just because they have some really solid baseline units. Yeah. So um, I'm really glad that more stuff is coming out for them because they do have a very limited roster currently. Yeah. So I'm really happy about that. Um, my next... And the next thing is, they kind of don't have any really good choices for just, like, carry. Like, I don't want to say any really good, but, like, you you don't have that, like, perfect pick for a, char- a character carrier. Like, a Ro- Roger Girl will do it. Um, the Archers will do it. But you're kind, of, you're kind of stuck into a lot of, like, brute elemental guys right now and then monsters. Um, so hopefully something else will come out what kind of is, like, the thing you put to babysit your characters. Um, they seem to be a little character-focused, what's not bad, considering all their spells. I do like that they have a lot of good spells. I really like that they have a lot of, um, power behind them, like your uh, Maharaja is your kind of killing, uh, like, nuke spellcaster, so he's just gonna be casting kill spells, while the sorcerer is your support spellcaster. Your Raj is kind of your buff spellcaster. Star doesn't really do anything. But... Yeah, it seems like is it's gonna reward being clever with setting up the rituals, building your stack. It's like, yeah, cool. I I think I I do I do like its uniqueness and like what it's doing on with like wizard stuff. And if you want to, you like. Want to be the Wizard King? You can be it. What is something in here that you dislike about Sorcerer Kings? Um, well, they've just got um, really. <laughs> my complaint right now is just that there's some stuff that's a little probably too good for its point costs. Um, so I think it probably needs to be adjusted. Um, which I'm sure will happen as as uh, regiments release and stuff. But that's I don't think there's anything too mechanically bad about it. Like uh, goals really are as bad as they say, but like some units are just bad. That's life. Um, yeah, but they yeah. have they have a very specific job, and that's just to be a speed bump, and that's fine. But I don't expect yeah, them to do anything better than be a speed bump. Yeah, at 110 points, like I'm not counting on much, but. Uh, I don't think that there's a lot of huge flaws in the design or totally uh, worthless units. There's maybe a little more bloodlust than I'd want to see, but whatever. I feel like that's going to like get itself out once you get into the monster mash of Sorcerer Kings. Even yeah. then, like yeah. flame cast, I'd take flame casts because it's sweet. Um, 
my myself, I don't. I think the the army rule of rituals. Some of these could be changed around to be more um, effective. I, I don't mm-hmm. like or more impactful. A lot of them, like conflagration and far side, are like the big two. I'm really looking at to be effective turn after turn. All the other ones are just like slightly better, but like slightly. I don't even know if they're decent spells. Like if this would be a decent spell that I would actively bother to cast. Like you're putting so much work into these rituals, and if your character just randomly dies, it goes away. Like you really want them to be impactful for what you're doing. But if you're a good player, and as you said, like it, it is a high skill ceiling action. What I do like. But I also don't feel like these are very impactful just right off the not right off the bat, but like even even at a high skill ceiling, like I just feel kind of go between Farsight and Conflagration as your two big rituals to do stuff with. So to me the rituals themselves aren't even the what makes the rituals good. It's what they enable. The elemental the rule. Yeah. Yeah, and that's fair too. Like there is more going on there, so there's there's a lot of good synergy in the faction like even so stuff like with the rituals like even if you're busting off a ritual that isn't necessarily the best thing in the world like it's still feeding your ability like your capability with your big hitters and, and things like that so i i do want to get a game in against sorcerer kings just to see how um this is actually played like we kind of read it and i have a very good idea now after going through all this like how this is going to work but I want to see like how my, how my opponent puts those ritual cards in their deck and their stack, and how the effect like is the ritual actually getting off on something decent? Is it then triggering into um, another regiment with the elemental rule to then have its three activations? Like you can do it, but like, is it are people actually going to be doing? It? It's kind of my thing. Yeah, and I I think people as they play Sorcerer Kings are going to get to that point. Um, and learning, like, hey, I'm going to cast Spiteful Winds, put March Plus 2 on this regiment, then I'm going to activate my uh, Rakashasa Basasar and just, like, charge Clash this character, charge, duel, Clash, rip, kill the character, rip apart the unit, or whatever. So, yeah. There's a lot going on. I, you know what I do? Like, I do like that the Rakesha uh, Bakashura um, has scoring points built into its just its um its abilities. Yeah. How Parabellum is is slowly tying in more and more of the scenario elements into um regiment and character design. I like that. And it really like, you know, makes the players go, hey, this is a scenario focused game. Go do scenario focused stuff. Stop trying to like your opponent try and win the scenario because that's what you do win. But do I do like that? Um, my next question for you is: What's something you think they could improve in uh, Sorcerer Kings? Uh, that's. I mean, I don't. I don't want to say that not seeing the full list because there's there's just stuff that's missing right now. So mm-hmm. I don't think we're getting a full picture of of what the the faction is going to look like. Um, and so it's hard to give specific feedback, you know. In that regard, I feel like um, I like it's more so that they have a little too much than a little too little. Like, is my reading like they probably need some their masteries um, and relics uh, probably could use a pass, but that I think is really those are the only really truly weak points in the army because everything else like I don't expect these guys to have every character to have a a slot of uh, all 100% perfectly applicable good spells because what faction has that no but the thing is with a lot of these characters especially like the sorcerer uh, sorcerer and the maharaja is that they have a spell at every point of the game which is really good so they're the character is always being useful at every point of the game. The Raj, not so much, but he's really just buffing himself and whatever he's stuck in. 
Yeah, I mean, the spells are, are fine. Uh, I don't have any complaints there. The units as a whole, like, goals are the only ones that have a really glaring problem. The, the um, Afrit and Dijin are... They could be better, but you have options that are worth taking, so... Mm. I'm not, like, at that point, we're getting, like, let's figure out how to make every other faction perfect, you know? <laughs> so Yeah. Um, but no, I would say the weak point for the army right now is the is the masteries and the the um, artifacts. Okay. And a lot of them are are just not really. Uh, but the, on the other hand, some of them are are good enough that I don't think it mitigates the bad. If you've got a if you've got an auto in best in slot relic for every character, and you've got the points to buy them, then it doesn't matter if there's nineteen bad ones. Um, my pick is that the archers get, uh, maybe two to three more passes to be like, what the fuck is this? Um, because they need, they need to be that very much. Yeah, they're super good, but, like, that's, uh, I didn't, okay, I think I misunderstood the question. Yeah, I mean, definitely fix the archers, but that's, uh. They're not out yet, there's still time. (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely got a pre-release, uh, stat line. Which I think people who've been doing this for a while can agree. Um, I like where Sorcerer Kings is going. I like that we went over all this and got a better understanding of them and broke down literally everything. Yeah. Uh, so I don't really have much else to say about Sorcerer Kings. I'm just I'm I'm excited to like see and play them. I'm excited to see them on the table. I'm excited to. Um, actually, like, learn what they're doing but through play and then build my own counters through play. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, a, I'm happy this faction exists. I feel really good about it. I, th- I think it has a lot going for it as well, what's really nice. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, it's a stronger start than City State's got. Um, we'll <laughs> see how they play out on the table. Um, Yeah, I. It's uh, it'll remain like. Hopefully, they they make enough of an impact that it sort of warps other aspects of the meta and and rebalances things in in that sense, the meta quote unquote. But overall, yeah, I mean, it's we'll have to see how things unfold. But they look good. I would I would try playing a game with them. I think just to see how it works out. But I'm kind of too deep down my own army's rabbit holes to do that in practice, so that's just something I'm saying for the purposes of gassing up this faction. Um, if if you had $500 and had the opportunity to buy two starter boxes, would you do it? Again, to the Sorcerer Kings, like, you play this faction? Yeah, I mean, if, if there was if, uh, there was no um, no Material barriers for me starting to play the faction. I, I definitely would. There, that is, I think they've got enough going for them. Just at a glance here, that uh, yeah, why wouldn't you? I would. I would play them too because they're so different, but also high skill ceiling. I feel than a lot of other factions. Um, I know yeah. their aesthetic isn't really my thing, but I would still just play them because they seem interesting and fun. I was definitely ambivalent towards them coming into it, and this has piqued my interest, so I guess you, the listener can make of that what they will, but... Well, we're gonna be... You're no longer be gonna be the Volva Queen, you're gonna be Cast Sorcerer Queen? <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't know about that just yet, but uh, I mean, the thing is, like, I never gave up being Hard Mommy when I became the Volva of the Nords, so... <laughs> you're just, um, I don't you're just taking yeah, them all I, in. Yeah, I can just keep on stacking increasingly fancy hats forever. I'm I'm totally capable of doing that. <laughs> How many hats can I balance in my head? All of them. Yeah, and when Hell comes out, like I know, oh, I'm sight unseen, I'm playing Hell. So we are both playing Hell, and it's it's gonna be Hell for our meta. As they're like, oh my god, two Hell players. Yeah, I think so. Especially since like we talk, right? So yeah. But hey, it's everybody else's problem. <laughs> um, all right. So with that, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, some plugs at the end here. Bonk Table has a Discord. Bonk Table has a podcast. Well, you're listening to it. 
Uh, Bunk Table is a YouTube hey. channel. Um, battle reports. Uh, I'm going to Adepticon, so look forward for those battle reports and probably a podcast episode about that. The what else? Um, Cassandra, you have an Instagram? No, nope. you have a Twitter. You have an X. Yep, Twitter? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, it's a Twitter. Yeah, um, you, have a, you have a bird. Yeah, it's Twitter. Uh, Bonk Table Cast is there. Um, yeah, um, I am. I get some weird stuff on there. I mention this every week, but it never gets any more normal. And I just, I'm, I, after having a, a personal Twitter that I, I curated the algorithm of for like 10 plus years, and it knows, like, it, it serves me content that is it, not necessarily that I like or that I'm looking for, but at least it understands what is relevant to me. This other account, no such luck. It's crazy. I can't get over it. It's nuts. That place is the Wild West. But I do have it, so I'm there. Um, so you can follow me. I make uh, just occasional dumb little jokes about uh, about Conquest, I guess, is probably the main content that I produce, mm -hmm. but it is there. Perfect. Um, I talked about the Discord. All these links should be in the description below. Um, yeah. Uh, we know a guy who makes widgets. Uh, I think I'm <laughs> obligated to bring that up every episode. Garrett with two T's. Yeah. So, you <laughs> can, uh, get some Conquest widgets at Sewn Geekery. Yep. Um, another plug. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess that's all we have to plug. All right. Everyone have a good night. Yeah, have a good one. See you after Adepticon. Oh!